Let's go, Fraser Friday, F T Live. Do you want to intro the show? Let's go, baby. Big crap to my left. I got the big scooter. Let's go. Got it, bro. In my basket. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm back. He's back. Ready to go. You sound good. I sound all right. I don't know what it is. My voice just goes. I gotta I gotta go back to the dock, get it checked out again, but it's Zoolander, Kratz. It's up in the brain. Zone. I got the black lung, Pop. <laughs> <laughs> he does get the black lung like every two and a half weeks. It's crazy. Maybe maybe we're working you too hard. You know, you play. You, you did the little talking league a lot. Series. True, true. He's true. a coach. You have other things scheduled. Don't touch me again. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, Brad Lidge joining us today in about half hour, and then Ken Rosenthal top of the second hour, and then we'll have our PG Player of the Week. Got to get a little name pronunciation on that one, so stay tuned for it. Um, let's charge. Oh wait, oh, wait! Before we charge, today is an important day. Mm-hmm. It is Roberto Clemente Day. Todd was the Reds' nominee for that very award in 2012. We've had some others on the FT Fam get nominated: Adam, Kip, Brock. So, um, first off, Roberto Clemente was incredibly charitable. Um, you can read all about everything that he contributed, uh, both to the game of baseball and to his community. And you were nominated. Do you, you have you got a little something? Yeah, for it's us? right here. Where it's is a little it? piece. Oh, there, there it is. It's actually really, <laughs> it's really heavy, to be honest. With you. <laughs> I, feel it. I didn't work yeah, out I feel yet this morning. bad boy. Oh, oh. clearly, <laughs> clearly that, that John got dropped. It, <laughs> wow. So, long story short, our, short, our uh, shelf fell, uh, and that bad boy took a little brunt of it. So oh, I'm going to. I'm going to have to call uh, MLB. That's a boss, that's a boss trophy. No, it is it, cool. It's got character. Even for not winning it? That's, it's got character no, it, to it's it. one of those where it's like, these are meaningful stuff. You know, philanthropy. Philanthropy, I can't even say the word. Um, giving back to the community. <laughs> Roberto Clemente was a guy that did. Yeah, no, I'm on, I'm on one. I like it. No, he's a guy that gave back he, for his community. Um, <clears throat> I did a lot in Cincinnati as well, and there's a lot of guys deserving this uh, award every year. I think one person from each team gets the award. And they decide who um, who the top guy is, which is great. And for me, it means a lot to me knowing what he did for the game of baseball, knowing what he did off the field for the game of baseball, and how he inspired so many guys, especially where he's from. Philanthropic pursuits. Thank you very much. Are definitely. Mm-hmm. Well, Kratz wrote to? a book. He's a wordsmith. Yeah, he's- I'm, I'm a wordsman. <laughs> vernacular. A lot of vernacular. <laughs> but all that to say, yeah, like it is something that as a player you – to be nominated for that, it shows that you're making a difference in the community yep. that, that you're in. Yeah. Also, speaking of your community, we are hitting Cincinnati next week. Not the guy with the red hat at the end of the table. Oh, you're out. Todd's in. I'm in. Danny Graves is in. Monday to Wednesday, the 18th to the 20th, we will be broadcasting live from Cincinnati, Great American Ballpark, or... Some may call it Great American Small Park at times. At times. At times. There's never been a day when it's not playing small. There's been a couple of days. No. No, there has. There has. I've been there. Tommy Pham went over it like A to Z on on the weather. I was there a couple times when it was cold. And then there was one time we get there hot and he goes, watch out today. (laughs) He's like, the boys are ready today. And it was like. 12 10. Listen, there's been a couple times where I've hit it and I'm like, damn. I'm like, oh, that went out. <laughs> That's it. That, those are the best. More days. often than not. No. Don't, don't say don't that. Do that to me. No, I don't, don't say that. Don't do that to me. It doesn't <laughs> demean your career. Listen, you had a great career. I, I, it is the greatest place to hit in besides baseball. Philadelphia. Second place would be Milwaukee. Third would be Philadelphia. No, Philly, I like better than okay, all fair. of them. You like those better than Colorado? Yes, I do. Yeah. Colorado's just hits. You're talking homers? Right, homers. Okay. Colorado's hits. Right. A day game in Colorado. Massive. If you don't come home with four or five hits in three games, you, you're really not good. Yeah. <laughs> because you're getting five at bats in no that game. <clears throat> and you're just – if you put the ball in play in Colorado, especially by the, like, third and fourth game of a series, outfitters are just like <gasps> – <laughs> And not because of the, – the whole, the whole thin air thing. Overrated. Nah. No, Over- no, listen, I had – I of hit course, a, you. I hit a triple one time. Of course, came in. I used. Uh, I put the mask on. Got the um, oxygen <laughs> tank on, bro. I felt so much better. Oh my gosh! I don't know, my guy. Just because you didn't hit triples. Just because, right? dog. <laughs> you are so. Never mind. I'm not even gonna say it. No, I, already, no, I, already, no. I already called out your mentalness. Your mental Whatever. weakness. 
We'll be at Cincinnati. The first place twins will be there playing. Hell yeah. Let's That's go. Be a great baby. Let's talk to some some ball players. Okay. This is going to make or break the Reds. I got a feeling it's going to make them. It's a it's huge series. It huge. is a huge series. Huge. Ellie De La Cruz. Let's huge. Go. All right. Let's charge the damn mound. We got the Rays and the Orioles basically going playoff mode. And actually, there were some complaints because in Baltimore, it was like 25 thousand or something but they i think they're sold out like the rest of the weekend so friday relax. Saturday, Sunday, it's okay yes. yeah friday saturday Sunday, they'll be okay Pl- the plus weekend. apparently it was a wild scene i learned that kevin cash and the rays had been preparing for this series for weeks with bullpen management mm. they were making sure that they felt like their relievers especially their top four which were insane yesterday who were insane yesterday however you say it, grammatically i don't care um <laughs> We're prepared to grind it out in this series because this could vault the Rays in front of the Orioles. They're only one game out one now, game. which is wild that they've kept up with them because Baltimore recently had a seven-game win streak too. And the fact that the Rays kept up and now beat them in game one. And the Rays had, have been playing with some teams. The Rays? Yeah. The Rays were playing some they've teams. Been they've been more hanging. so than Baltimore, I would yes. say. And then you see them go Savali for, for five, Aaron Savali for five, and then one, two, three innings. In six, seven, eight, and nine, Peter Fairbanks struck All out right. the side. So nice. that game was ridiculous. And your thoughts on not just the ball game, Kratzy, but are the Rays about to take the AL East back from the Orioles, who were heavily favored to win the division like a week ago? Like you saw those odds. Remember, we ran them. I don't remember the exact numbers, but they were heavy. This is where having a daily baseball show, you can you can put all the compilations of everything. And you're going to see me like this with the Orioles and Rangers for a while. Now mm-hmm. the Rangers are kind of here because you kind of ride the highs because you're really into it watching it. But this is the other thing that as a player, let's say I'm on the Orioles right now. You're sitting there. If you are inexperienced getting into the playoffs, you're going, oh, man, they're really close. They're a game. Okay, but you've just lost three games in a row for the first time all season. You have – just come off a seven-game winning streak. You've never gotten swept. So you're going to come out of this series. It might be tied. You might be up by two. But you know what? It's going to be okay. If you're on the Rays and you've never been in the playoffs, which they have a ton of experience, Mm -hmm. they're sitting there going, we still got a lot to do. We've been grinding. We've been beating the Mariners. We've been beating who they beat before, the Rangers. Was it the Rangers, I think? No, Houston was beating the Rangers. But they just came off a big series against the Mariners, playing well, come in first game of the series against the Orioles. They've been grinding to get to this spot. That wears you out. Kevin Cash mentioned it by saying how much he needed these guys in this series. They've been grinding to get to this spot. It was Guardians, Red Sox, Mariners, Twins. The Red Sox series is who I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. It was Mariners, Twins. And they're coming off the Twins, where they took two out of three. Yeah. Sweeping sweeping the Mariners and then – well, the only they took three out of four. The last three, three out, it was a four gamer. They lost that one nothing on Thursday, but still, super impressive series there. All, all that to say, it's a mindset. The Orioles have to understand that they are the better team. Mm-hmm. They are top to bottom the better team. Do they have some weaknesses that the Rays have advantages of? Yes, but there's a reason they've been in the playoffs. I mean, they've been in first place for this long, and they overtook the Rays who were the hottest team in baseball, they were the first to 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 wins. And the Orioles have been the first to 60, 70, 80 wins in baseball. So it's a situation in AL. AL. In AL. I'm sorry, not in all of baseball. Braves fans, we know you're watching. Braves 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 will lose their shit. Yes. We know you're watching. Sorry, Braves fans. We love you. Yeah, they're just playing. They're getting ready. (laughs) All that to say, this is where experience helps. Down this stretch, you can't get too high. You can't get too low. You have to literally play the game one game at a time. I think the Orioles will come back here. If they don't, it's a bad, bad, bad way to limp into the playoffs. But I think the good part about this is they're both going to make it. And I know they don't don't want to be a wild card team, but in the back of their mind, it's like, all right, say the Orioles get swept here. Just say. Mm-hmm. Four like, games. It's like, all right, we're down, but still, like, okay, we still have a shot at first place, and we know we're definitely in. 
it's not the right mindset to think, but knowing you still have that in the back of your mind, okay, I could deal with it. I'm still pissed off, but at the same time, they're both getting in the playoffs. But even if they get swept, they're only down by two games. True. Like, it's not – like, they're not going to get swept. I don't know what the odds are on them getting swept, but it hasn't happened in 76 series Mom, since – A now? billion. You're, for the Orioles, they're not getting something. swept. They're Maybe. not going to get swept. Oof. So that means they're going to win one of the next three games. I'll be watching. I think they'll win two of the next three to split the series. And that's, that's a win for them. It's like when you watch the Ryder Cup for golf. You don't necessarily have to beat the previous champion. We you just have point. to tie you the half point. And that's where the Rays, that's where the Orioles are. And the Rays have to climb back into this. They're taking more effort to get back in. The Rays re- uh, relievers, by the way, now 34 consecutive innings pitched without an earned run. That's 11 days on that a calendar. Ridiculous. That is absurd. Ride the wave. Yeah. Ride it. Oh, his bullpen's good, too. Even without Bautista, Ride it's it. been pretty solid. It's like low three ZRA since August 25th when Bautista went down. These are just good teams, good playoff vibes. The Orioles call up a top prospect every week. Their <laughs> top prospect of the week is Heston Kerstad, who's 24 years old. He's got a pretty good story oh. to him. He made his debut. Unfortunately, had to face Robert Stevenson and his ridiculous breaking ball these days. But congrats to him. And he replaced Westberg late in the game. But you'll see... More of Kerstad, I'm sure. They they said primarily off the bench, but he could do a little bit of corner outfield and DH for them. Just another first-round talent bat. And this is the only thing, right? Negative Nancy on a Friday. When you tank for six years, you get a ton of prospects if you do it right. And the Orioles are just – they're just dripping with prospects. So I, I hope props to them. I hope they're great dudes, too, that can handle this situation because this is where you don't need to call up Keston Herstead. You need to call up 28-year-old Todd Frazier, who's been bouncing around a little bit. He was in the minor league system. You claimed him off of waivers. He's not going to play that much. Kessler's oh, not I get play what you're that saying. Much. Yeah. And, and, I think and, he's okay, though. He's been through a lot, and he's 24. You're saying he's going to be like, I need to play right now? I think he's no, going to no, be no, pumped no, no, to no. be in a I'm playoff saying, race and say, I need to play next year. I'm saying what type of – he's earned – what he's done in the minor leagues, he's earned his call-up. I'm not saying that. To be in this situation, you don't know what you're going to get out of them. You know Mm -hmm. what you're going to get out of a – a Brock Holt would be a great example of somebody you would want to plug into that spot. Now, obviously, not everybody has a Brock Holt, but organizations that don't go and make that move at the trade deadline, Harrison Bader was available. Orioles couldn't get to him, but – you know those type of things, you pick those guys up for this situation, so it's weird – it's not weird. It's just how the Orioles are run that they have to call up that that well, high level prospect guy. Let me ask you this: When are the minor leagues done? Aren't they done soon? No, no, no. But nice, nice job by uh, the commissioner to push the AAA season longer. Uh, yeah, we're paying minor uh, leaguers more, but you wow. actually have to pay. You have to play till September twenty fourth now. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's but, an, that's but hey, they're paying them more, so don't worry about and it. That, does that include playoffs too, or no? Oh no, no, no. Oh, so oh, so they're going regular in regular season. They're going in, and really, what it does that's is it does it, it. There is a pro, and you know I can crush things no, that's when ridiculous. I want. There's a pro to this, though. You can, if you're a pitcher and you're coming back, get a little rehab going there. If you're replacing someone on the big league roster, you're still playing AAA ball. You know, I feel like we would get to times at the end of the year where they're like, "How does this guy rehab or get back?" There's there's nothing to do. There's no more minor league season. Isn't that why they stretch it? They send them down at the end. The guys they don't call up, there's probably seven or eight in each organization that is in the playoff contention or in the playoffs. They're seven send, sending seven or eight guys down to the complex in Florida. Or yeah, but that's not as good as playing minor league ball, is it? No, it's not. But I mean, it's what I'm saying is that MLB eliminated that because they weren't paying those guys. They'd be like, well, we'll put you up in a hotel and we'll give you meal money. Yeah. But they're not paying them. Well, you can't do that anymore. No, there's, there's a, a big lawsuit. Yeah. I got a check from that lawsuit from the minor leagues for Let's not go. getting paid. That's what I'm talking about. But <laughs> now they have those games. Yes, it's awesome. Mm-hmm. But my my whole point to that was like, yeah, wow, look, we're paying these guys. Well, yeah, you're making them play an entire, almost an entire month longer. Yeah, they'll get the, they, they know what they're doing. They get the money back from the gate and from, you yeah. know. The, the minor and the whole teams. deal. Yeah, I love exactly. it when the September call-ups will come in. You see, like, you, 
you and your boys would go up, you're like, <laughs> bro, let's go, dude. I can't wait. And you got like eight or nine guys coming with I know. You, you guys love it, but it's not – Entertaining it made a ball. Of a game. Yeah, it made sometimes, a trudge of a game. Sometimes. I, I, sometimes it was cool. But all right, I have a question for you. Cause you've seen plenty of Toronto this year, because you do Yanks some pre and post action. What the fuck happened to them? Bro, what bro, happened to Toronto? They're not losing by little either. They're getting <laughs> crushed. They got or... spanked. 35 runs to nine. And it felt like more. They were booing the hell out of them the last two days. That is an unacceptable performance. At home. At home against a Rangers team that was feeling it. They were going through it. Dare I say Manoa effect? Oops. Really? No. No. That dude's been out. I he know, hasn't, but he I, hasn't I, showed up I, since the 11th. We just found out about the fact that he – You, I don't you know, think that man. trickled in? Like, Where's dudes, the or? offense? What happened to the bullpen? I don't know. Um, but here, my thing, I get what you're saying. On the year, they expected to have – a number one or a number two in Alec Manoa, no and, and you you pick up dubs there. They lost a lot of games from him in the beginning of the season, but still, and they're still on pace for like almost 90 wins, but still, this is your playoffs right now. You're fighting for a wild card against a team that has struggled. No Adolis Garcia, no Josh Young right now. Obviously, mm. Scherzer happened, and they're you'd think they're devastated from that, and they're not, and I, I'm going to give some credit to Bruce Bochy on the other side because whatever he's – Wow. Doing with the boys, that th- that roster no longer looks like a star-studded roster. Corey Seager is on another planet. I don't know why anyone's pitching to him at this point. He's got the best OPS in the AL. But in my mind, when I look at the Rangers roster, and actually AJ's been saying this a lot, so he'd probably go, "Oh, you're getting this from me." He's like, bottom half of the lineup is not super impressive looking, and they just dusted Toronto. It's incredible. And we can show like Shai Davidi here um, with this tweet and the quote, I think we understand the moment. We just got our butt kicked. Just turn the page. Despite a pregame team meeting, a Kratz specialty probably requested it. Former Blue Jay Eric Kratz said, guys, we got to meet about this. <laughs> and Matt Chapman's return. And I'll add to this tweet. Bo Bobachette recently returned. And Vladdy Jr.'s f- first homer in 10 games. The Blue Jays hit. That's a word that I don't really mess I, with. Nadir, we didn't learn that in New Jersey. No. As the Rangers complete a sweep. What the fuck is going on? Are we are we talking about the Rangers right now six, seven days ago? Or are we talking about the Blue Jays from the last three days? Well, who, who This is exactly the same thing which has happened. The Rangers just got absolutely boat raced, almost to the T of what the Astros did to the Rangers. Mm-hmm. For a three-game series, and the Rangers looked dead. What is going on? Mm-hmm. Oh, Siri wants to talk <laughs> about it. She's excited about She's it. She's excited. Siri's Siri's, fired up. Siri is definitely excited. It was to the T almost. The, the Astros came in. What did Jose Altuve have? Four straight homers. They hit like mm-hmm. three straight games of five home runs. Playing a different game. Play, were, it was a different level. And that level. is exactly what just happened to the Blue Jays. And you know what? We had said after that series, wow, we think the Rangers are Dunsky. And I said, they could be Dunsky, but they have an off day. The Blue Jays don't have an off day. The Blue Jays go into their next series right now, and they just got boat raced, just like the Rangers did at home against a playoff contender who leapfrogged them during this series. The Astros leapfrogged the Rangers. The Rangers just leapfrogged the Blue Jays. <laughs> This is what is exciting about the end of the season when you're watching it from each team's standpoint. If you're a Reds fan, you're only watching the Reds. You don't see what the Diamondbacks do unless they're chasing you. But now we're watching the American League. We're watching the American League Wild Card. We're watching the American League West. It is crazy to me. Every game has sanctions. Like Every game we're watching from here on out besides maybe a handful – it's meaningful. You go, you go point up on somebody or you go point down or game back. It's, um, it's exciting to watch right now, to be honest. And poor Blue Jays, man. Game and a half out of the wild card, it's, it's, it's put up or shut up time. What do you think? Why, why did you say you think it's the Manoa effect? Like not I, having I don't know, him man. Or, or the I think the not having him and just, the, just everything that got, was along with it. People like, oh, man, that was a while ago. But it still has lasting effects. You know what I mean? You hear about it in the newspaper. 
You hear about it online. You hear about this and that. Well, because also the latest news was he didn't report. Yeah. The AAA. So. so now another thing that, there's, that there's guys have to drama. talk about. Hey, did you hear about this thing about Manoa? What do you, what, you know, what do you have? People are, they get sick of it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Let's just play. And right now, I'm not saying that's the effect. I just right. threw it out there. No, no, no. I, I know what you're saying. But I mean, I hear what you're saying, but that's, you know, the lineup. Those boys should bang. Pope Shet's having, having a great year. Kiermaier's having a great year. Vladdy, mm. man. No, Chapman. Vladdy's underperformed. Yeah. Chapman, he's, he's good, not besides great. Besides his one month, yeah, has been back. Yeah. bad ski. But now he's back, you know, a little time off. And I feel like if you come back and then you don't do well, he's been back. He's just been back. It's not like he's been yeah. back for a week. Was I rushed? Did we rush him too much? Well, we have to rush him. We got to get out there. You have to. If that's how you feel, you're SOL. Mm-hmm. Hey, we're ready to bring on our first guest of the day, and we can mix in some of this. The two-time All-Star, 2008 World Series champ is actually down in the Atlantic City area for a little appearance action coming up. It is our friend Brad Lidge joining us on FT Live right about now. Brad, how you doing, man? I'm, I'm doing great. How about you guys? We're good. We're good. Actually, I mean, we might as well kick this right over to you because you're, you're hosting shows on Sirius every week. So were you sh- as shocked as us just now on this Rangers Blue Jays series? Uh, yeah, I would say uh, I would say I was very shocked. Um, you know, I- I've been listening to you guys. You guys covered it well. I mean, you know, there's no great explanation for how something like this can happen. And, and really for the Blue Jays, it's been just I mean, the entire season has just been a roller coaster where they've it feels like they've dramatically underperformed. I wouldn't say they've dramatically underperformed. They certainly aren't where they should be right now, but. Um, when you get your butts kicked like this in a series, uh, that that really puts an exclamation point on you know where they're at in the season right now. This is probably the best pitching staff, uh, top to bottom, I have seen with the Blue Jays in my lifetime. So uh, there's really not a ton of excuses for for how they could be doing this, uh, you know, this poorly. And and again, it's 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 not that it's dramatically bad. It's just that it's not where they should be right now. And you're right, the offense should be banging way more than they are. Uh, but really, you know, it, there's no guarantee in the future, even without, you know, I mean, w- with, with everything that's happened there in that rotation, there's still no guarantee in the future you're going to have a rotation like this, you know, next year that everybody's going to be healthy, whatever's going to happen. So I just, uh, I don't know, you know, Manoa going down, fine, but the rest of the rotation is legit, and they should be throwing a lot of, you know, six, seven inning shutouts, especially when you're prepped for a team like the Rangers coming in a big series like this, and instead the opposite happened. Hey, so, oh, go ahead. No, no, I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. what are you more shocked good. about? It, by the way, it's good to see you guys. I'm just going to throw that out there right now. A lot of familiar faces right here. Good stuff. Good <laughs> yeah. stuff. Todd, yeah. Todd used to hit homers off of you, and, no, I, used, no, and no, I used to no. catch you. <laughs> That's right. Well, you put down the wrong fingers then. That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Not when fall. you were pitching. It was too easy. You just threw that slider splitter thing that was just go straight down, and it was the, the, the machine wouldn't even know what to call your pitch anymore. <laughs> like the. What do you call it? It was a slider. It was a slider, but instead of it going like it would spin like a slider, instead of it going side to side, it would go straight down. Slide like it's ball. exactly it's exactly what every analytical machine oriented team says. If you can throw this slider, this is the perfect slider. His slider was the perfect slider is it like analytically. A, a, it, you combine the word like slider, screwball slider. No, no, they would come up with a word. But that is exactly what they want out of it. <laughs> There's like the slutter. There's all kinds of very, you know, different ways you can come up with things. But that being said, it was that 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 movement on that pitch was a byproduct of really bad mechanics when I threw it. And then I realized somewhere along the line, I was like, just roll with it because it's making it go down instead of, you know, lat- laterally. So, uh, yeah, I just kind of uh, rolled with it. At that point. It worked. It worked out well. Yeah. When 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 pitching coaches say. You know, keep your head on it. You were like, you mean move it farther out away from it? <laughs> you mean and bail it was- off to the first base side and have terrible <laughs> mechanics? Got it, yeah. Yes, yes. Greg Holland said the same thing. He's like, oh, so you want me to cover first while I'm pitching? Anyway, <laughs> all, that, all that to say, what are you more shocked about? A week ago when the Rangers got absolutely boat raced or this week when the Rangers absolutely boat raced the Blue Jays? 
Oh, man, it's a great question. Um, I, I'd say this week I'm, I'm a little bit more surprised at just because I, I thought I thought the Jays were going to start coming together. I really did. Um, and, you know, the, the Rangers with the news with Scherzer and everything else, it would be easy for them to be a little bit flat. And, uh, you know, like I said, instead, the opposite happened. But it, I, I guess I'm more surprised about this. Like, it almost looks like it's put a charge in them. And, and you know, they, they still have a really good rotation. Obviously, that Rangers bullpen is, you know, the, the, most of the entire season, it's been rough out there. Uh, although Will Smith had a great start. And, you know, you can say what you want about it if you're comfortable with Chapman closing games or not. But um, the offense is, is, is certainly showing up. And, you, you know, you're right. Corey Seager's like, I mean, this dude – uh, you know, I know Otani's going to get the MVP, but he really, even though he missed a good chunk, Seager should really be, you know, somebody people look at for that. Hey, earlier in your career, you had a broken forearm and a torn rotator cuff. Um, my question to you is, coming back from that surgery, you hear guy, a lot of guys like, oh, when, when you get this surgery, well, Tommy John, you're supposed to throw faster for one. You didn't get Tommy yeah. John. You, you had all the other things but that, I would assume. But yeah. – how did you how did you feel coming back? We were talking about Manoa. He he lost a little bit on his fastball. Did you ever have, you know, that kind of feel when you pitched all of a sudden you, you just didn't throw as hard and you're trying to figure out what the heck's going on here? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, more like I, I had a lot of injuries. I had four surgeries in the minor leagues. Uh, actually, at one point, I had four surgeries and three wins in the minor leagues. That was uh, that was not my <laughs> oh my <best>. god, <laughs> that was not the best start to a professional career, but. All of those surgeries I actually came back from probably throwing a little bit harder. Like the rehab worked really well in those, uh, you know, the, the, the strength and anything else. But like later in my career, uh, in fact, 2011, I tore my rotator cuff uh, with the Phillies. And, um, you know, I did it in spring training. And I remember getting the news and I was like, oh, my gosh, should I get, you know, some kind of surgery or what on this thing? And, you know, that would mean the, sur the season was over. So everyone's like, just try and rehab it, come back. And so I missed the first half of the season. But when I came back, instead of throwing, you know, mid 90s, I was basically throwing 90, 91. And I was just like, what is going on? Everything I had to throw 90, 91, like I felt fine. I just didn't understand why, you know, there was nothing on the ball. And, and so I think at that point, you know, that, that was kind of a big turn for me in my career. Unfortunately, you know, I never was able to really reinvent myself successfully, you know, throwing change ups or something like that. 2012, I kind of took my slop into the season with the Nationals, and that didn't work out great either. But, um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd say this, Frage, like like recovering from elbow things, there's there's no doubt you can get all the way back 100%. You can even gain a click here and there. That's possible. But when you have like a torn rotator cuff or something like that, it's really tough to come back and gain uh, or get back all the way to 100%. So when I saw that Max Scherzer, you know, had a partial tear in that Terry's major or whatever it is, uh, in his, in his rotator area, like he's not only going to be not pitching this year, but he's going to have to do something miraculous to come back and be pitching, you know, anywhere close to what he's done previously in his career. All right. Talk about recoveries. I saw you in 2008, perfect win the world series, you know, celebration. You're going to sign a bunch of pictures. I wish Chooch was going to be there to sign pictures with you. <laughs> that, that, little, AC? that little, that Where's little, that little, no, he's down in he's down in he's back home. He's in Panama right now yeah. at his, at his yeah. horse ranch, <laughs> at his bull ranch. But he's uh, but you recovered to get to that point. You recovered from one of the more memorable home runs to give up against Albert Pujols, and I want to talk about how that felt. Oh, oh they're going to show it to you. Oh no, <laughs> that is, it up. Chris. I've never hey, seen that, is, that before. Is, is he's that never, seen, never it. seen it before. Oh my god. <laughs> Pujols licking his lips, going around the – now everybody's seen this oh. home run. And we want yeah. – I want to hear your reaction to it, but I want to hear first the story that Laner told me. Jason Lane told me the story of when you guys get on the plane and what the pilot said, which I'm yeah. going to give a little bit of a pre-story that the year before you guys lost in the playoffs in a situ similar situation, ended up not advancing – to the World Series. And so it was kind of felt like the same thing after this home run by Pujols. And what did the pilot say? If you can give us that yeah. story, <laughs> it is absolutely hilarious. Yeah, well, I mean, first, me. needless to say, I didn't uh, I didn't feel great <laughs> after that. <laughs> I was a little, little bit shell-shocked, like, you know, what just happened? Um, I'd had a run of a lot of good games against the Cardinals up to that point, in including the previous year in the postseason. But and and some in this postseason but then when he hit that yeah it was almost it was kind of hard to 
uh, just kind of hard to wrap your head around, just kind of hard to believe for a little bit. Uh, but, but, you know, we were all kind of collectively hanging our heads and, and you're right. Like, so we got on the plane and, um, you know, I, we're all bummed first of all, because now we got to travel to St. Louis and, you know, like all these road trip plans change if something like that happens. So we get on the plane and, uh, you know, the pilot gets on and I don't know, maybe we're an hour into it, a half hour into the flight. And he's like, you know, if you look out to your left, you can see whatever, whatever. And if you look out to your right, we can see uh, Albert Pools' home run still flying by the airport. <laughs> and I was like, I was sitting there and like, you know, because I'm still like in my own, you know, everyone's going to be moping and I'm still moping and everything else. And, and I'm like, I think, did I just, did that just happen in my head? Did that actually happen? <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I looked around and everyone's looking at me. I'm like, that. That actually happened, right? So anyway, uh, long story short, Brad Osmus told the uh, the pilot to say it. And at some point, not long after that, you know, I, I just started laughing because, I mean, it was it was basically classic Brad Osmus, but also like, I mean, what, you know, what what else can you do at that point? And, and I think the the when I started laughing, like everybody else started laughing, it was one of those deals where it really loosened up the team. And I thought at that point, I was like, man, you know, that was one of the best things he could have done for me, for our team, for everything else. And then sure enough, game six, the Royals walk goes out there and shoves. And we uh, we were fortunate enough to advance to the World Series after that. So, now, you know, I, I think a lot of people knew at that point Brad Osmus was going to be a great manager at some point. He's I hope he gets another shake at it. It's been a little bit tricky for him so far in his managerial career. But I think he handles things pretty damn well. And I think he did a really good job on that. Hey, I got a question for you. Not in this era of baseball, pitching wise, you see guys, if you're not throwing 95 plus, you probably got no shot right now. I yeah. want to ask you a question. If you were in your prime right now playing baseball with all the analytics going on, everything else, how do you think you would fare against the hitters nowadays? It's a great question. I, I've often wondered this myself, uh, you know, watching the evolution of this stuff. Like a part of me thinks, and probably a part of every retired player thinks they do better. Right. They're like, oh, man, now I can just throw my slider over and over and over and nobody makes any adjustments. Nobody, you know, tries to on O2 to try and just, you know, slap it or, or, you know, choke up a little bit. Everyone's got the same swing. To be honest, I think I would have to probably uh, be a little bit better with my command. I, it, it's a great question. And I really don't know the answer. That I think my slider would play even better. But I think my fastball would get hit around the ballpark because. You know, me throwing 96 or whatever is just a dime a dozen these days. So uh, I think I would have had to have been, uh, you know, and that used to be a really effective pitch for me, obviously, my fastball. I'm not sure. I'm not so sure it would anymore. How would you stay healthy in this game? Because I'm assuming, you know, anybody that threw 96, 97 is like, yeah, you know, I'm throwing hard. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, 96, like you said, it's dime a dozen. How would you stay healthy? Because you wouldn't be a closer. You have to throw 105 to be a closer now. So yeah. how would you have stayed healthy? Because they they would tell you that you have to throw harder. And to me, I think closers stay healthier because you know when you're going to pitch and you have very you have less dry humps. You're used less. You're just used in different situations. Yeah. Well, you know, to be honest, I never had any issues staying healthy until about 2010. I missed some games. I was pretty fortunate in that. Like I didn't go on the disabled list, or yeah, at that time the disabled list, now the injured list, uh, for a long time. Uh, you know, my first six, seven years, um, and so I, I would say two things. Like, you know, I, I, to be totally honest, and this is going to sound like you know, old man, get off my lawn, but like I am shocked at how little relievers pitch back to back to back days, whatever it is, um, and how like you know everyone's just being treated with these uh, you know these tender gloves out there. Like, I mean. You know, I'd throw four or five days in a row and because that was what was asked of me in early in my career. And in fact, if you look at the numbers in 2004, I think when you combine the playoffs, I had somewhere around 90 games and 105 innings or something like that. And, uh, you know, I felt great doing that. Now, that being said, slowly but surely the wheel, you know, I was like a click less in terms of velocity every year. It felt like after that. But I always threw as hard as I could anyway. So. I don't know if uh, I don't know if that would have changed much for me with guys trying to max out right now, but I felt like you know when I was having my long stretches of health, that would that wouldn't have changed. In fact, maybe it would even be a little bit easier for me now because I wouldn't have to throw those you know four or five days in a row like nobody does that anymore. Uh, I wouldn't have to have you know the games and the innings under my belt. I I can tell you at the time that I had that, I felt good, but I also know a lot of veteran guys at that time were like, hey. You know, you got to say something. If you if you're throwing four or five days in a row, they're going to keep putting you out there unless you say something. And that's the biggest difference, right now versus you know back when I was kind of in my prime throwing 
is that you felt this pressure, not just from your teammates, but from the staff. I mean, from manager, from pitching coach to go out there every single day and, and to let them know that you were healthy and you could do it every day. Now they won't let you make that decision. Now they just take the ball out of your hands and say, you're down you through back to back days, you're down today. That's just the way it's going to be. Uh, so I think it, in, in a lot of ways, it would be easier to stay healthy uh, for myself, maybe coming out of the pen, but I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's a great question. And, and, uh, you know, but I, but I do think, uh, guys are way more, guys are way more prepared and, and have way more off days when they need them now than I've ever seen. Do you think that's making them softer or more chance of getting hurt? I mean, making them softer makes them sound like, you know, I get it. They're out there grinding they're out there doing their thing, but like, should guys throw more to stay healthier because it doesn't feel like yeah. the injuries and we hit this all the time. doesn't feel like the injuries are going down, even though they're pitching less back-to-back days. It's exactly right. Um, and I think, you know, I, I think that players perceive, you know, being hurt and, and needing to go on the injured list a little bit differently. Uh, maybe if they're not feeling a hundred percent or whatever, they, they, you know, kind of will let somebody know. Uh, whereas before, I think that's kind of when you, you needed to figure out how to pitch. Like, so I do think it kind of, uh, in some ways limits their ability to 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 know how to pitch because they think, you know, probably a, a lot of guys today want to be 100% if they're going to go out there, uh, but you don't always have that luxury. So I, I don't know. I, I would say for starting pitching, Crassie, there's no question that, that starting pitchers now understanding they're only going to be out there for five innings are maxing out on their stuff for five innings because they're not going to go through a, a you know, lineup three times. So why not throw 100% for five innings instead of, you know, gradually kind of getting to that to that spot and what i think ends up happening is even though they're throwing less innings starting pitchers they're maxing out in terms of like their effort while they're doing it which is leading to more uh surgeries and more injuries because if you know you're throwing seven eight innings you know every every five days you're going to get out there and throw 90 percent for you know however many pitches you're not going to try and max out on every pitch like you have to do now so i think it's crippling starting pitching for sure and creating more injuries for starting pitching bullpen is kind of tricky to say so this is going to lead to my next question, the George Kirby situation where he said, oh, man, yeah. I wish I wasn't out there. So let me let me get mm. your explanation of that. Let me get your feel on that one, because to me, I'm like, man, I, I want a guy that wants to grind out there and throw over 100 pitches. You know what I mean? So what you know, give me the old school you and give me the new school you. What do you think? Yeah, <laughs> the old school me is out of says, I don't even want this guy on my team. Like, like yeah. what the hell is that? Like that is. And, and you know, I don't. I'm not, you know, between his ears. I don't know what's going on there, and I and I don't pitch in 2023. So, you know, th there could be a lot of other stuff. I would say that, you know, just to even have that thought process cross your mind, you are truly a byproduct of 2023. That 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 thing that you think that that's something that you could actually say, and that you know maybe there wouldn't be any repercussions for it. Like th that's ridiculous. Like you know, I'm, I'm sure that you know you guys know this and everything else. Like the the thing you want to be is is a workhorse like if you're a starting pitcher like you want to be somebody that can go go out there and throw until the you know until somebody forces you out of the game like that was always the goal is to be called a workhorse and it almost sounds like you know in a lot of ways for kirby it's like the kind of the opposite where he's like you know i just want to get my whatever pitches in and then come out so I i'm sure he's been crushed look I, I don't need to pile on here like the dude has been crushed social media i'm sure his teammates look at him differently now i'm sure every like the fans look at him differently now so I know he's he's taken you know a lot of heat for this, and I don't need to pile on. But it is shocking to think that 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 thought process could, uh, thought process could actually come into someone's mind, and they actually felt comfortable enough to say that. It, it truly is different, it, you know, in twenty twenty three. Hey, what do you think a closer's mentality is like in terms of his personality? So, do you have to be either super competitive? super crazy, super kind of out of it where you don't get phased by anything, like even things that people should be phased by. It's like, oh, look, like they're robbing a bank that you're about to walk into. And you're like, oh, man, all right, I guess I won't get some 20s. All right, see ya. You know, like, do you have to have one of those like crazy, you know, personality traits? Like I would say for you, from, from knowing you, it's you're, you're quite competitive. Uh, I, I would just say this, and uh, sorry, I'm trying to find a, a charger for my computer. I hope it doesn't oh, no. cut out here anytime soon. But uh, but I would just say this. There's a variety of personalities for closers, for sure, that I've come across. Some guys are more methodical. Some guys are absolutely, you know, 
nuts every time they go out there. And because of it, they're not even going to be thinking twice about whatever it is that they're doing. That's probably a good mentality. Obviously, regardless of whatever your preparation is, you got to be somebody with a short term memory. You got to be able to flush it and move on to the next day, which is what we, you know, try and teach kids in Little League and everything else. I mean, you have to have a short memory in baseball, period, but especially as a closer. Uh, so you got to have that. But but that being said, like, you know, I always thought my my mentality was more of like a starting pitching mentality. Like I liked kind of looking at numbers. I liked thinking about, you know, various things. But uh, in truth, when I got out there and the adrenaline started pumping, it was more like just trying to let it go as, as hard as I could and and, uh, and try and challenge hitters and, and you know, blow them away with a fastball or make them look silly on a slider. So it was it's just you just there's no set way to do it. Uh, but you better have a short term memory because. I mean, you're going to blow saves. You know, if you're closing long enough, you're going to blow saves. You're going to blow important game saves. Uh, and you got to be able to keep coming out there and, and uh, being the same, like, I, I would say this, a big, big characteristic you got to have is being the same person in the clubhouse every day. You got to be able to walk through that door, even if you had a couple bad ones in a row, and be a great teammate, still be the same guy. Otherwise, you know, you're probably not going to last long in that role. But if you are that same guy and that same teammate, then your teammates will respect you regardless. I was born in 1980, so I didn't see the 1980 World Series championship for the Phillies, but I was definitely alive in 08. Take us to that last <laughs> pitch. Oh, against yeah, um, that's a nice, that's nice airtime too on the jump. I know he got yeah, up right, yeah. and then yeah, big piece uh, landing on top of you. That didn't feel man, good. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. This this right there, that was great. And then he, here, when Howard comes in, bam. Yeah, then it was just uh, 20 dudes piling on top. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, you know, I had faced Hensky before and, and I told, uh, you know, I, I, I told Juge, I was like, listen, uh, you know, I, the only time I've ever faced this guy before he hit a fastball off the wall off me in Houston. I was like, he, he waffled that pitch. Let's let's not go there. And Juge was like, all right. So uh, we kind of, you know, sat back with Doobie and we were like, look, uh, pitch a coach Doobie. And we were just like, let's just throw sliders until he's out. <laughs> so we basically, Chooch goes back there and he just never put down any fingers because we were just going to go sliders until it was over. And, uh, you know, I threw some good ones early in the count. He fouled off one or two. And then uh, when I came set on that last pitch and gripped it in my fingertips, I was like, oh, this is the one. Like I, I could feel the seam uh, just felt just right in my fingertips. So, you know, let it go. And it had that good, uh, you know, that movement we were talking about kind of down and away from a lefty. And, uh, yeah, and then it was just pure elation after that. I mean, still screaming for joy on the bottom of, uh, you know, 20 dudes that are 200 pounds. I'm, you know, I'm still screaming, and uh, even though I can't breathe. So, uh, it's, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's what you live for. It's pure elation, that's for sure. Come on, Big Piece was bigger than 200 pounds. Don't don't get my guy. Uh, oh, okay. Big I Piece mean, at 250. <laughs> Chooch? Was no. he 250? No, 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 Big no. Piece. No, no. Howard, Ryan oh, Howard. Oh, Ryan Howard. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he, man. He was the first one that, that got you. But yeah. what – a lot of people forget because some people that watch the show weren't really watching baseball in 08. Like, think about the fact that you guys had a game. That game was rained out in the sixth inning. Am I right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the, tied it. That's right. Yeah. The, the sixth inning. So yeah, now and, you're sitting there on that day. You're like, okay, well, I'm definitely coming in this game. Oh, wait. No, it's not today. Then you got rained out again the next night. And then everybody in Philadelphia showed up because people were giving their tickets to people and you could buy standing room tickets or people were forging tickets. How <laughs> different of an, it was, I'm telling you, it, was it is, it was it's nuts. going to be, it's going to be a 30 for 30 at some point. It's going to be an outside forging them and getting in because they were selling them secondhand on the market and it wasn't all digital. So people were buying tickets oh. to get into the game that it was just the restart. It was just a restarted I, game. Yeah. I mean, it, it was unbelievable. There had never been really anything like that because, you know, the continuation of the game was going to happen the next day and it got rained out the next day. So then we had to wait another day uh, to, to start everything up. And you want to talk about like not being able to sleep. Uh, you know, we're on the cusp of winning a World Series and, you know, I know I'm going to be pitching and it's going to happen immediately. And, you know, when that, when, that, when that happens, everything will be on the line. So, you know, that, that night it got rained out. Didn't sleep well at all because I knew I was going to be pitching the next day, really. And then that get, day got rained out. And so then, you know, don't sleep the next night either because uh, the adrenaline that's going through you at that point is uh, pretty hard to, to, to describe. So, yeah, it was an absolute – I mean, it was a shit show. We, we can say shit on your, on your show, right? We can say yes, that? Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yes, different. we that's encourage, we encourage realness, yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 y
right? Yeah, it, it was a shit show for sure. But it was, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, that said, it was, uh, uh, it was amazing how it worked out nonetheless. And obviously, none of us would change it for the world. None, none of us in Philly would change it for the world. Mm-mm. For sure not. For sure not. Rays, eh, whatever. But, <laughs> so you win the game. You win the game. You guys are a tight-knit group. I played with most of those guys later on in 11, 12, and 13. Tell me your best memory of that night partying, and you can't use Cole Hamels, or not Cole Hamels, I think it was Matt Stairs, getting driven to the party with a cop in because the beer, because the beer, the places to buy kegs were closed and they had kegs in the back of the truck, get back in the paddy wagon delivered to one of your teammates' houses. So you have to you have to find a different story from that night because you didn't sleep those last yeah. previous three nights. Yeah. I know you didn't sleep that night either. <laughs> well, all I can say is, you know, we're we're at Pat Burrell's place, uh, downtown Philly. It's this awesome loft down there. And, uh, you know, everyone's in there, including what felt like to me half the police force at one point. I mean, there was like so many, so many cops and they were uh, they were helping us out. And, you know, they were keeping security, everything else. But at one point, I remember looking over the railing uh, of, of his loft um, in Rittenhouse Square and looking down and it was, you know, toward Broad Street. And it was uh, it was chaos down there. I mean, people are jumping up and down on cars. Windows are kind of getting blown out uh, on, on certain stores and things. And. You know, we're up there, and and I remember one of the policemen was just kind of like somebody was kind of looking at him. He's like, "Listen, he's like, we got we got enough work to do when people aren't happy, so we're we're gonna let him celebrate tonight. We'll clean up tomorrow." And uh, I was like, "Man, that is awesome!" Like, it really kind of fired me up. There, it's just kind of one of those things where, you know, in Philly, like, uh, <laughs> yeah, there was a little bit of chaos going on, but it was it was pure joy chaos. So they were gonna let him celebrate and uh, and clean up the next day. But yeah. Um, I, I don't. I didn't go to bed that night either. So, it was a it was a long few days there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. That is wild. Did you guys party like that when you guys won? No, I was. I got fired before the World Series was over. Oh, for yeah, for the Royals for KC. Mm. We Did partied they? like that after we won the American League Championship Series. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. In Kansas City. Got after it. And it was in that Pat of- Burrell's loft, though. Whenever I hear Pat Burrell's loft, I'm like, all right, here that we go. I'm pulling up my sleeves. We didn't have Pat yeah, Burrell's that's loft. That's a vault or- that probably shouldn't be open very often. Yeah. Pat Burrell's <laughs> a 30 for 30. I'm not talking about now. From his playing days? Just for life, Ooh. yeah. Holy no, crap. And we didn't And we didn't have Brett Meyer's house out in, out in, the, out in the suburbs either. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a, that could also be a, an interesting show, too. <laughs> topic. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Um, uh, w- one, one more thing for me, just cause you're watching the current game a lot. Um, do you think trout gets traded this off season and you're going to see a bunch of Philly fans tonight, which we'll show a little bit of that, um, on your way out. We'll show a little graphic for people in the area. But when I was at the sports book last night, there's some Philly people like, you think trout's coming? I'm like, Oh, we're, we're starting to get this buzz now. I like this. This yeah. is cool. And then Otani too. So your take on that that whole mess in Anaheim that's actually in my mind going to turn into one of the most covered baseball off seasons in MLB history. Imagine Otani and Trout switching teams. Yeah, I guess if you're an Angels fan, this is not uh, this is not good. This is not a good time. Not a good time to be alive. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, I think Trout could very well get moved. Um, you know, it's uh, unfortunately for him, you know, the, the injuries have been, you know, real and it's, it's creeping up a lot more on him these days. And so, you know, you have to, you have to take that into consideration, but I'm sure the angels at this point would eat a little bit. I would guess they would even eat a little bit of that contract if, if they're able to move them. Um, and if the Phillies, I mean, if you can move Mike Trout, how would the Phillies not be in on it? Uh, you know, it's in some capacity. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's, Obviously, they've just spent a ton of money on Trey Turner, and he's doing great. So uh, maybe they can say that that's uh, that's going to be a success story, success story too. But um, you know, I mean, the truth is, like Middleton's never been scared to spend money, and so if, if Trout's available, I, I think the Phillies make a move. I think uh, I think he moves to the uh, to the Northeast somewhere. Uh, but that being said, I don't think Otani goes back there either, and I just think it's going to be an absolute. Uh, horror show for Angels fans this offseason. I, I think there's a good ch- chance Trout gets moved. 
and they kind of figure out how to start over. Uh, because at this point, it doesn't do any good for, for them. Uh, it does, it, it's great for the fans to be able to see Mike Trout, but it doesn't do anything for the franchise to, to keep a hold of him right now. And for the game of baseball, like the game of baseball needs to have Mike Trout move. It needs to have Otani with a different team because the Angels aren't going to get anywhere uh, you know, over and over every year. We got to see those guys in the playoffs. Like That's what everybody wants to see. And so I think uh, you know, Mike Trout would be probably pretty happy to waive his no trade clause to go to a team that actually is going to be in the postseason. No doubt, no doubt. So you're from Colorado. You're a Colorado yeah. kid. Were you a Rockies fan growing up? And if so, what is going on with this squad right now? <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> oh, it's goodness. so bad. It's so bad. Uh, yeah, look, so the Rockies came in there when I was in high school. I think I... That might be uh, it. His computer might have died. It I was going to tell him out. at one. We should have told oh, him. Oh, he's frozen. You know, I was going to tell him at one point, and, just, and he might come back. Yeah, just to go put it in. Yeah, like, we're good. We could, we could talk. Trust me, we could talk for a few minutes we without got, him. But, we got time. Yeah. Oh, uh, and he was, he was loading up. He was. <laughs> you got him fired up. Like a 3 0 count. On the rocks. Mm, boom. It's not, it's not, uh, not difficult. You don't get many Rockies fans. Well, and we don't, no, we don't talk about are... them enough, and I want to talk about them sometimes <laughs> just because I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? No, just, no drama, no scandals. Just like what's what's going on? What's just happening not, there? What did their owner say? He's he's I content. Hope, you know, I think we have I think we have a, a five hundred team. Oh god! You built a five hundred team, <laughs> yeah, and you're proud. How do you? And get, you're telling people. And he said, he said it with his he chest. He said it with his. He did say it with his chest. How do, how you know, it's a five hundred team. How you know, you come on that, down huh? to you Denver. You get away with it because in Colorado, it's just you're you do a good job of just shielding yourself from any real scrutiny. But my thing is, how do you get away with that in the sense of like, like it is, it is a very now generational thing to say. Like, I have an answer. I don't want to be a tryhard, bro. But that's like in any job. Like, oh, I got a 500 effort. We win some, <laughs> we lose some. We, we got hey. this client, we didn't. It's okay. 500 is good. No, you'll never survive. I, I've, you, want me, you want me to play better? Pay me more. No, just, You're only paying me a million, million dollars. I'll give you a million hey. dollar effort. <laughs> What? On 500. <laughs> well, remember, what was it? The year before, he said we're going to be good or a playoff team or whatever, and he got smashed. So this time, yeah. he's like, "All right, you know, like I could see him like in front of the mirror. He's like, all right, sure, it's good. Okay, <clears throat> this year we're going to be 500. Yeah. <laughs> do I smile at the end of this, or do I, do I come on down to Coors? <laughs> yeah, but I I do have an answer for why this is occurring there. The city supports the team. They do. They get pretty good attendance. Great area around it, too. It's a fun environment there. And so what does that create? A lot of money and a lot of complacency. There's just not this strong desire to say, guys, what, what are we doing? What's the plan here? Yeah, so they're, they're okay. And it's, and it's mom and pop. You know that's how, what I was going to say. You know how Russ Dorsey said that about the White Sox? It is so mom and pop out there in Denver, right? Like they, they become friendly with some of the players' families. They become friendly with some of the players to the point that they're like, I don't care what's better for the team. I like this guy. I'm keeping him in Colorado. That, that's not how you run a business. Or that's even, not how most teams are know. operating. It's cute. It's actually kind of cute. <laughs> like, oh, I'm, I'm friends with them and their family. Buying, I don't want to trade local. him. We're buying a local. That's what, <laughs> what they really are. They're like, they're, they change, they change job titles enough, but with the same people, it's the same group of people that keep changing the job titles. And they're like, we've had a lot of turnover in the organization. Mm -hmm. You've had zero turnover. You had zero turnover. They like somebody, they go and put them in the TV booth or they, they like somebody and they become an assistant GM. You're in the fam. You're always in the fam. In the Almost fam, to the point of the White Sox. Yeah, it, it's except it can they've be a been detriment. in the playoffs. True. It can be a detriment, and from a preparation standpoint, I mean, I don't know if you guys have any friends that played for them. I've heard. Remember, I brought this up to one of the players. I said, yes. "Oh, who was it? Mike Tockman was on." Oh. And I go, "You know, how was your Colorado experience? Knowing that you're kind of on your own." And he was like, he completely agreed, and was like, "Yeah." He goes, "You know." When you're on your own like that and you're a young player, it's like you actually have to learn the game a lot because you don't really have a lot of help for preparation. So not really good for winning, but for development, he was like, I actually think it was good. It was helpful. <laughs> Just pay attention to guys who come up through the Red Rockies organization, mm -hmm. successful, good players, 
They groomed some good players. They Tulowitzki, LeMayhew, Arenado, Blackman, Arenado, like dudes. Story. Dude, Trevor it was great Story. for them. Dudes. If A lot those, of dudes. If those guys stay healthy, watch where they go in the big leagues and see how they do. Like the guys that I played with, I played with Talkman. I played with a couple other guys that were really good players. They were like, the game is so much easier when you have an idea of what is coming. <laughs> they gave us nothing. Couldn't have been more excited to get out of that malaise of an organization was the word that was used. Yep. Not my word. But you know, it's like you practice harder than you play or whatever. You know, like, hey, if we go hard and practice, then one, it'll feel two, easy. three. Boom. We got you. Lidge is back. Is. There you go. Okay. You know, I was going to mention at one point, and I know we had you a little longer here, but we're having fun. We'll get you just to, just to finish. But um, we were going to say at one point, like on this show, because it's it's chill vibes. Like, go grab your charger, yeah. man. We can yeah. we can BS we'll for a minute curtains. or two. I was like, damn, we probably lost this computer. But but you're back. So um, we were we were just kicking it around about the rocks, your your hometown squad. Uh-oh. Oh, he's got a he's got a stone face. <laughs> he no, didn't, we, we had he a didn't charge, we had a charge his phone. interview with him. No, we did. He's great. He is really I, – I didn't know what to expect when you come over to a team. I came over to the Phillies in 11, and they had already won the World Series. They went back to the World Series in 9, lost, lost in NLCS in 10. Super, super focused dude. He was hurt, so we got to see him you know, come through some adversity. And I'm up in the big leagues. Like this guy is completely content with helping whatever it takes for the guys in the bullpen. Mad Dog was our closer then, Ryan Madsen. And like he knew his role in that bullpen was not the same as it was in 08 and 09. And it's cool to see when you see superstar, what I call a superstar, a dude that's been at an elite level for a long time, Mm -hmm. still be able to contribute even though he wasn't, you know, yep. who he used to be. It, it, it was awesome. And just you don't forget dude. guys like that. No, no absolutely not. not. And he, you, they welcome you in. They make sure they dress you up. He dressed me up when I was a when I was a rookie that year. A beer maid, German beer maid. Ooh. I still <laughs> have the good, outfit. That's a good role for you. Halloween. I'll wear it. I'll but my wife one. doesn't let me. I'll take one now. A big, a, a big rum. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. If you want to have one with Brad Lidge, you can do that. Tonight, oh, it's going down For at real? the BetMGM Sportsbook, six thirty Eastern. You can go hang out with the man, the myth, the legend, Brad Lidge. Super chill dude to grab a beer with. You can literally oh. do that at Borgata beer do. at the BetMGM Sportsbook and Bar. So check that out, <laughs> baby. I'll be there too if you want to hang out with me. I, I think most people, you know, that they, no, they, they couldn't fit my name on the scooter. graphic, but <laughs> I will scooter. be there. You know what? You know when you go to see Santa when you were a kid? <laughs> the elves? Scotty's one of the elves for Liz. Yes, he is. That's he fine. Is. He's just I can like, bring beers. Santa's over here. He's like, he's like, hey, Make sure you know what you're going to have Brad Lidge sign. Yeah. <laughs> Make it quick. Yeah. And uh, here's your foul territory wristband. Yeah, and whatever you want to ask him, <laughs> let me uh, screen it first. Anyway, I got questions for our guy, our senior insider, Ken Rosenthal, following up the closer, Brad Lidge. Kenny. Let's bring him in. Kenny, uh, what a freaking Ooh. series, Ken. Wow. Rays Orioles, how fun was that game last night? And I said this at the beginning of our show because there were some fans on social complaining like, why isn't it sold out? Whatever. The rest of the days are sold out. It sounded like it was still a great vibe there. So give, set the scene for us. What happened? Well, Scott, on the crowd, actually, I was disappointed. It was about 25000 And yes, they are sold out tonight and tomorrow. But I was in Baltimore in the 90s when they sold out every night. Now, I know times have changed and it's a school night or whatever, but my goodness, that's a team that should be packing them in, honestly. And that game last night was as good as it gets. And John Smoltz said it very well on the air. He said, I wish we could be doing the next three games as well because each game, it just seems like it's going to be close, well played. Last night was extremely well played. The Tampa Bay bullpen was absolutely brilliant. You had a couple of big home runs from the Orioles. Two run triple from Rosa Reina. There was a lot of good things going on and just a fun game to watch in general. All right. Momentum matters. You wrote momentum matters. Okay. But did momentum matter for the Rangers six days ago <laughs> when they got boat raced by the Astros and now they've won six? 
Well, Eric, thank you for reading, and I'm glad you pointed that out. The way I phrased it was momentum matters this time of year with a bullpen, the way Tampa Bay's bullpen is rolling. 34 straight innings without allowing an unearned run. But let's face it, that might have been not the best line I've ever had because (laughs) we all know momentum is the next day's starting pitcher in baseball. And yeah, Texas, what they've done after going, I think it was 4-16, and then they win two against the A's, and it's like, okay, great. Big deal, you beat the A's. And then they come into Toronto to play four. And they trounced Toronto. I think the combined score was 35-9. to And it's a strong statement by the Rangers in so many ways. They lost Scherzer for the season in the middle of the series. Jordan Montgomery came out that night and pitched great. And offensively, they found their mojo again. Seager, if he had played more games... I think we would really be discussing him as an MVP candidate. I don't know that he can beat Shohei out when he's at around 102 games right now. But still, he has been a dominant force offensively. And in the Tampa Bay clubhouse last night, after the game, some of the players were talking about Seager, saying maybe he should be MVP. So that's where his status is within the sport right now among his peers. But it's going to be really interesting to see now if Toronto can pull a Texas and snap out of it. That was an embarrassment. That sweep happened at home, the biggest series of the season, and I just cannot figure out the Blue Jays like many other people in the sport. It's hard to understand what's going on here. They've got a tremendous pitching staff. They have seemingly an amazing lineup, and yet they have not hit. You go right down the line, Bode Bichette is about the only one of their bigger players who you could say is having the kind of year you would expect. And... It's going to raise all kinds of questions for this team going forward if they fail to make the playoffs with this group because that showing or no showing in Toronto was a five alarm fire in my head. It was just unacceptable and shocking almost to see the Blue Jays just kind of fall apart like that. Crazy. I, I agree totally. But first off, I just want to know where you got your haircut from, man. You're looking really fresh right now, brother. What do you tell the barber? <laughs> What's the first thing you tell him? I don't say much, Todd. <laughs> no, they, they, There's they, not that much to know. work with, man. But you know what? It was a new person who did my hair, so maybe I'll go back to that person. Yeah, but, but what do you say to him? Like, hey, man, can I just get a little nip on top? All right, here's here, what I say. I, no, I, the whole, this is the whole instruction. Short on the sides, longer up top. That's all I say. I tell you what, I give credit to that barber. It's give, working. Give, it's not bad. I man. like it's it. not bad. Hey, I want to get into it a little bit, the in-game interviews, man. People are getting critical about these. Um, You know, talk to us about that. I I love all that kind of stuff. That's where you get the juice, you know? So, like, what's going on there? We started it last year on Fox in the playoffs, and I was covering the Phillies for almost their entire run. We didn't have the wild card series, but the division series, NLCS World Series, we had the Phillies. And they were extremely – cooperative about it they were eager to do it and we had some really great moments doing those in-game interviews now what fans need to understand and i explained this last year but i'll be happy to explain it again i'm not just popping in the dugout and bothering players that's not how it works we talk about this with the teams with the players beforehand certain players agree to do it certain players do not want to do it and that is absolutely their right And then if the moment arises, and it has to be a special moment, then maybe I'll pop in and ask a question. It's sometimes two, no more than two. So last night, what happened was Cedric Mullins made a great catch in the first inning, I believe, and we interviewed him right after that. Then we had home runs on the Orioles side from Ryan O'Hearn and Gunnar Henderson. We interviewed each of them, one question each after that. And I saw some comments from Tampa Bay fans. What about us? Why is Fox so biased? It has nothing to do with bias. All it has to do with is the flow of the game and actually also two outs makes an impact. We're not going to interview a guy with two outs. And later during the game, we interviewed Aaron Savali after he came out and was done after his five innings about his performance. So it's a fun thing to do. And I would admit, I said this last year as well, I had reservations when we first started talking about doing this because... I like to think I know my place, and my place is not in the dugout. But this is a different kind of deal. I'm really only there for maybe a minute. We wait a little bit before they come to me, and it's one question, and I'm out. So it can give you some insight as a viewer 
into what the player's thinking in the moment. That's the whole idea. And it's been a really effective thing. But for all those people who are going to come at me during the playoffs and saying, stop bothering the players, we are not bothering the players. They have agreed to do it. From a player's <laughs> point of view, Ken, there is nobody that the players would want in the dugout more than you. You do an incredible job with it. And whatever they say on Twitter, I know for a fact, I would have loved to have you interview me. And I know from the players I talked to last year in the playoffs, they loved it. So you keep doing a good job, but the haters will hate. So don't worry about it. You have a million followers. You just have more haters than everybody else. That's okay. It's all good. Hey, Eric, people are entitled to their opinions. But with this thing, I think people don't understand always how it comes about. And that's just the reason I wanted to explain it. Yeah, no doubt. You do a great job. Keep it up. Somebody else that I think has done a great job and can't keep it up now, Heim Bloom, getting fired in Boston. I told you my opinion. I want to hear some more facts behind it because I was part of the player development. I saw how he built the player development headed by Abe's in, in the minor leagues there. And the people that they hired and the people that they fired during that time I was there, the people they hired were people that were great people. And he built that organization. He built that minor league system, I think, to 10th when they were 30th when he took over. So – what, what, is there more behind him getting fired that we don't know about? Eric, it all comes back to ownership, in my opinion. And we have to view Heim Bloom from the prism of when he was hired and what the expectations were. And they said they wanted him to build a consistent winner. And they wanted to do it cheaper. That was the implicit message when you hire someone from Tampa Bay. They wanted a more efficient payroll. They got that. They didn't get the consistent winner, at least not yet. And certainly, the past two trade deadlines have not been Bloom's best. There have been some other decisions that have been questionable. Well, welcome to being a general manager. That happens. No general manager is perfect. No team is perfect. It's just the way the game is. Could he have made some better decisions? Absolutely. And he would probably be the first to tell you that. But again, I come back to ownership. And ownership was the force behind the Mookie Betts trade, which, of course, created the negative perception of Bloom in the first place. He had to trade Mookie Betts. The entire industry knew it. He didn't get enough from Mookie Betts because you cannot get enough from Mookie Betts. Not going to happen. And as Andy McCullough wrote in The Athletic, he was kind of doomed from that moment in certain respects. But to your point, Eric, they have done what was asked of him, which was to build a better infrastructure, which was develop the farm system in a much better way, they now have some young players coming. We've seen some of them in the last couple of weeks. They have a core developing that's going to be kind of intriguing for years to come. And he said it in his statement. There are great things ahead for the Red Sox. And I believe that. They're going to have to do some things in free agency and spend some money in ways that ownership hasn't done of late, especially on pitching. So, sure, Bloom is the sacrificial lamb here. And... You can make a case always to let someone go. I understand that. But his mission, as dictated by ownership, was in many respects fulfilled. And yet, this is the decision they come to. And one more point. This is a general, or this is an ownership that now has gone through three or four general managers in the last 12 plus years or so. Every guy seems to get about four years and then he's out. Ben Sherrington won a World Series, out. Dave Dombrowski won a World Series out. Bloom did not win a World Series. They could finish last for the third time in four years under his reign. Sure. They did go to the NL, I'm sorry, the ALCS in 21, and they've had some good things happen. But it all starts at the top, guys. It's so true for every team. And you see stability in certain organizations that you don't see in others. The Red Sox pride themselves on this great franchise. They're an unstable franchise because they keep changing the people at the top. Is there a team that wishes that they could have Heim Bloom? I don't know that he'll jump right back in as a president of baseball operations, and I don't know that a team would necessarily hire him. These guys do get a little scarred in the public eye when something like this happens, but I can see him being a force in a front office somewhere for sure. And again, there were shortcomings, Eric. I can't ignore that. But he did, again, a lot of what they wanted him to do 
and yet it still wasn't enough. And it wasn't enough, understandably, because they haven't won. And that's the bottom line in the sport. Fans were kind of turning on the team. But you know what? Fans have turned on Brian Cashman in New York. Yankees aren't firing Brian Cashman. Why? Mm -hmm. Because of what he's done in the past, because they believe in what he can do in the future. Now, fans might disagree with that. Well, you don't run your fan, or I'm sorry, you don't run your franchise according to what you might be hearing on WFAN in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> this is what this guy thinks. This is, how, this is how he sees how moves should be made. Johnny from Brooklyn, how you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How you doing there, Ken? Kenny, I want to go back to Baltimore and then raise real quick. Who went, who's going to win that division right now if you had to choose? One game back, they, they got a bat. Baltimore's got a battle ahead of them. That bullpen for the Rays is really good. It's effectively two games back because the Rays right now do not have the tiebreaker. The Orioles need only one win in this series to have the tiebreaker. So we have to keep that in mind. I don't know, Todd. I don't know. And watching the Rays bullpen last night, I know it was one night, a snapshot in time. I was a little overwhelmed. It was 12 up, 12 down with seven strikeouts and one after another. Poche, uh, Armstrong, Fairbanks, the whole group. It was impressive. Stevenson, of course. So you can't do that every night, but they've done it every night for about 11 days now. Haven't allowed an earn run. And that alone gives them an edge, even over a Baltimore bullpen that remains quite strong without Felix Bautista. I'm worried about the Orioles starting pitching. Flaherty goes tonight, and he has to do better than he has done for them. At the same time, the Orioles have this way about them. And I asked Gunnar Henderson last night about this when we did our in-game interview. They have a resilience, and he said, that's been our MO all year. That's who we are. We come back. We get unfazed by anything. And for a young team, that's extraordinary. That said, the Rays are experienced at this. They've done this. And they've got a Rosarena starting to pick it up again and look out if he gets hot. So the Rays, for all their troubles, the losses of McClanahan and Springs and Rasmussen and, of course, Wander Franco, they're right there. They're right there because they're always there. And I would not be surprised to see them take this thing. You know what's been crazy to me, Ken, as I'm watching these two teams go at it because they are very different ball clubs in my mind. Jose Siri goes down very valuable part of this team and I, I forgot I'm like oh yeah Manny Margot and they bring him back and it's like perfect timing they're oh there's lefties yeah. in the bullpen like let's bring up Margot a little bit early and and throw him in this series at some point so the but depth even without that, Franco yeah. Taylor Walls is a very good defender the best defensive shortstop in the organization for a while there are a couple of days they have Basabe playing shortstop he's another kid they just churn out these young middle infielders it's amazing and not all of them are stars like a Juan Franco is, but they do, Scott, have very enviable depth all around. And it's one of the hallmarks of their organization. And really, because of the losses that I just mentioned, the starting pitching and Franco, this arguably is one of their best seasons in just getting the performance they have out of the players that they have used. It's pretty incredible, actually. And on the Baltimore side, they're healthy. Like, aside from Felix Bautista, I know that's a, a huge loss for them. Like, they haven't had massive injury. Like, the Rays, I'm looking at the rosters, and I'm like, whoa, the IL has serious names on Tampa Bay's side. The question I want to ask you about, though, is what I read in your notes about Jack Flaherty, because I feel like this is the time to bring it up. You reported that Jack Flaherty could have been shipped to Tampa Bay, and I'll let you fill in the rest on what happened. What happened was that... The Rays had an agreement with the Cardinals for a trade to get Jack Flaherty to Tampa Bay, and this was after the Aaron Savali trade. So they were going to add Flaherty in addition to Savali. And it fell apart because something happened in the medical stages. A player was identified and flagged, and the Cardinals ultimately decided, we don't want to do this. We want to turn to Baltimore instead. Baltimore gave them a pitcher who shut down Baltimore just two nights ago, to Rom. <laughs> And so far, so good for the Cardinals in that regard. But who knows what might have happened if Jack Flaherty had gone to Tampa Bay, which has had such success with pitching. Robert Stevenson is simply the latest example. Wrote about him today. Baltimore doesn't have that same track record, though they've certainly done well with the current group that they've acquired and put together. But Flaherty has been a disappointment so far. A big disappointment. 7 ERA and I think six starts. 
So he can still rewrite his story for the rest of the year, but it's quite interesting that these are the two teams, the best two teams in the American League, and they were vying for the same player, and the team that got the player isn't necessarily happy about it the way he has performed so far. No, you're right. It's hurting the team more than helping right now. I mean, 60 RA is not going to fly for a playoff team, obviously. I mean, he's not a playoff rotation lock like you like you wrote about. Okay, so one more on playoff rotations. What do you think the Dodgers playoff rotation looks like? Man, they were flying high in August. You're like, are the Dodgers about to be a serious threat to the Braves in the postseason? And now, in addition to the guys they've lost, which you can cover the, the Kershaw news, too, is, is I'm super curious to see where he's at physically. And they haven't told us a lot about him, and he hasn't either. Well, we have to go by what we see, right? His velocity has been down his last two starts significantly. They pushed him back this time. He's had this shoulder issue. None of this is good. And I don't know what it means for the postseason. Maybe in their minds they're getting him ready for the postseason, resting him up, or... Maybe there's a more serious problem here, and they're simply trying to get him through as best they can. They've got Kershaw. They've got Lance Lynn. They've got Bobby Miller. They've got Ryan Pepio, Ryan Yarbrough to be a bulk guy if they use openers. They can do a number of different things. They might not have the experience with this group that other teams will have in the postseason. They have stuff. One of their people described it to me the other day as we'll be in the 80th percentile for stuff and the one percentile, first percentile for experience. That's <laughs> maybe a little hyperbole, hyper, hyperbole, but at the same time, it's not the same kind of Dodgers rotation that we might have seen, for instance, with Kershaw healthy and Urias and Bueller and all these guys, Dustin May, Tony Gonsolin, right down the line. It's a different group, and they're going to be challenged, but their bullpen's been really good. They will find ways to use and deploy their pitchers better than most teams do. And as I wrote the other day, I don't expect this to happen, but wouldn't it be something if this was the year with all these obstacles in front of them, the Dodgers finally got a World Series title over a full season in the Andrew Friedman era. I don't expect it to happen. The Braves are simply too good, but who knows? Baseball is a crazy sport and crazy things do happen in October. Yeah, teams get hot. Offense is, I mean, we talk about pitching and defense, but offense is a huge deal in the playoffs. Like, they've got it. That offense is good. They can swing the bats. But you're right, they're not a super team this year. So it's like, it would prove the point that the the playoffs are the playoffs. It's not always the best team. Playoffs? Playoffs, exactly. Ken, uh, great to see you. Enjoy your weekend. We'll talk to you next week. And, oh, wait, before you go, I want to throw this up there for everyone to see, the Fair Territory promo that people can obviously catch the show every Monday. Um, on YouTube and wherever you get your pods. But also, there were a lot of questions in the YouTube chat just now, and I would like them all to direct their questions <laughs> over to the Twitter feed that you love to watch uh, of your own Twitter feed because you'll throw out a question for Grill and Ken at the end of the show. So just want to call that out for everyone. And you <laughs> handpick them, right, every week? We you do, go yes. Through. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. um, yeah, we get rid of the, the weird ones. And we'll We'll – display some good ones but there were about 10 just now we're not getting to him now ask ken he'll answer him himself so todd doesn't interrupt him talking about haircuts <laughs> ken we'll talk to you next week <laughs> thanks guys appreciate you yeah. awesome all right it is a gorgeous sunny day outside i do see some beautiful sunglasses on the desk right there there they are can you grab them you got them you don't want to knock anything over if you did, though, it would be okay. It would be okay. I'm saying if you knock them over and smash and they fell 20 feet down these stairs right now, you'd be okay. Dude, the reflection on those bad boys. Those it's are unbelievable. These things are unbelievable. I'm telling you, if you fish and you go fishing with these things, you throw your hook in and you're like, oh, it's going to go get my. Oh, there's, gonna... there's the five fish. Just... There, goes, there goes the Marlins. All the way through, boop, 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 and you just watch it the whole way. Just no glare. It's unbelievable. These, these what, smack. What are those called? Shady rays. Wow, gorgeous. Unbelievable. Well, if you want high quality shades built to last, not breaking the bank, just ask Eric Kratz. Especially if you're into your outdoor adventures. And right now, use the code FOUL F O U L at shadyrays.com for fifty percent off two plus pairs of polarized shades try for yourself the sunglasses rated five stars by over 250 
thousand people. All right, let's get into some locks. But MGM locks for yesterday. We first start off with the free game of the day, streaming on the BetMGM app. So if you're like, damn, all the blackouts in MLB and I got to pay for 90 different services and all of that. Well, good news. You can watch this game for free tonight. It's the Rangers and the Guardians and live streaming is available to all BetMGM customers who are logged in and have funded accounts. So check out that little action and see if the Rangers are real again or if the Blue Jays just crumbled. Mm. It's probably a little bit of both. They're playing the Guardians. Which means, we're like, wow, wow, Kratz. This is, like this, is the, this, wow. is a, this was a quote taken from Scotty Brown earlier in the season. Wow. Oh, well, they're playing the A's. Exactly. Right. But they're, not, playing, they're playing the Guardians. The Guardians. Guardians have some pitching. Yeah, they have all the White, white, white Sox and Angels pitching. <laughs> <laughs> right. They did win the dump deadline. It did nothing. The waverins. We, we we overhyped the dump deadline. Yeah, it was, we are guilty on that front. It was Although, hey, if those dudes exciting. pitched to their ability, or at least some of the back of the baseball card stuff, they would have been better off. Let's uh, let's look back at our locks. I'm back on track. Let's go. Holy, we got voided. Wait, how did I even give my lock? I wasn't even there to give my lock. Did you guys give my lock? You sent it to us, so you got voided. Well, that's good. Everybody pay attention to that. I got voided. It rained out in Colorado. It's actually perfect. You weren't on to say it, and you got washed Damn. out. And the you best guys, part? You're, you're, go, on, go ahead. No, the best part is, yeah, they were going a little they were going a little ham on the right side. Whew. They weren't looking for a lot. Yeah, they're they're killing me. I, I'm, I'm trying to tell them. Kratz. I'm trying to coach them. They're not listening to me. Kratz is a monster right now. The game, Where baby. did I go? <laughs> I guess I'm not. You weren't there. Oh, that's what well, I'm looking for me now. It's that's okay, from yesterday. Where are you at? You guys need to look at – you're doing well. You're doing really no, well. You I'm, were at 1,900. I think you – Hey, listen. You put like four something down. You Follow won. me. It's Friday night too. Oh. It's Fraser Friday. I'm what excited got? to Full see moon, what you maybe? have. Yeah. I'm excited what to see you what you got? I don't want to tell you. Okay, then I'll tell you. Because you're going to laugh at me. Rewind the show and look exactly at what was just on the board there because they didn't play it but the same starters are going. <laughs> I'm running it, John, back. No thing. way, are you? I'm running it back. Why Let's not? Go. How many times can I get actually get to run it back? They run the same pitchers out there. So it's Chase Anderson yep. with one walk, Chase Anderson with one, two strikeouts, which he's okay. gotten every single start in Colorado. Talk to me. And Logan's Webbs. 4Ks. <laughs> Appreciation Station. He has that every time except for come up with this one stuff? game. I mean, this uh, is Lock Central uh, Nation. It's well, ridiculous. I'll tell mine. I'm going Yankees. What? You just Mine is two and a half. At two plus, and a half. Plus 165. I'm going three to win 495. Wow. Two and a half. Yeah, I, I'm going. I, it, it, they won three out of four in, in, in Boston. Yeah. And it, 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 let's go. I'm trying to win a stake here. Come on. Is it? Is it September or is it is it <laughs> April? Why? Two and a half? You got the Yanks at two, two and, and a half? Two and a half. See, I actually enjoy at this time of year looking at some of those games, the non contender games, because sometimes those look too playoffish, which is tough to predict. But I'm like, yeah, I, I do see the Yanks winning. I'm just I'm scripting it differently. It, okay. The Pirates offense has been kind of quiet, even yesterday, two nothing and a dub against the Nats. I'm just I'm too concerned I'm getting off the run line game these days, guys. I've been doing it, and it's been working for me. You see, I found a formula. I got Yanks money line, Garrett Cole, six Ks or more tonight. Pirates what's that at? Minus 105. That's it? That's that's nice. Pirates, Look at that. I, reason, thought, I thought it'd be like minus like 150. I know. I know. The and, reason they're getting that is because the, the Pirates don't strike out much during yeah. the season. But in the last three series, they've been striking out a ton. Thank you. I so I'm like that. six. I don't push it. Kratz notices. I don't push it. I don't that go, oh, he's getting eight you tonight. You big on now. How much you putting on that one? For you? For Friday? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm for the people. Whoa, yeah. You can't. You can't. 210? No. I'll go 210, Claudia. Put me oh, in for 210. I'll, I'll double up. Uh, this is for the people, you know? You've been like this your whole life. Well, I got a lot of friends that say, listen, I got 100 sack. bucks Let's tonight. What here. am I doing? Yeah. So tonight it's Friday. He you know, we do the weekend spending. Throw sack. No, I don't, I don't agree. Jamie, don't help agree. me out. Bonus code FOUL, F-O-U-L. You see my guy, Jamie? Jamie, I love Download it. the BetMGM Sportsbook app on iOS or Android. Visit BetMGM.com. Sign up and deposit at least 10 bucks into your new 
BetMGM Sportsbook account and you place your first wager and receive up to fifteen hundred bucks back in bonus bets if it loses. And if that does happen, your bonus bets will be available once your wager is settled. Gambling problem or concern? Call one eight hundred Gambler. And we have our next guest ready to go. Um, right and just there. to give a preview, we'll we'll go over the Rob Thompson comments a little bit later on, and we'll go over <clears> some <throat> of the uh, other matchups. But we are we are ready for our next guest. It is time for our perfect game player of the week. Up, oh, just kidding. We need one second. BRB, um, but still coming up on this show. So we got an interview. I want to remind everyone also that we are on AMP. Um, if you want to listen to us, it's like a little live radio action on your phone. And if you would like to call us, you can do that through the app and talk to us at the end of the show. So or anybody get on from app. Jersey, call us. <laughs> We've had a lot of New York, New Jersey. All right, cool. let's do this. Our perfect game player of the week is ready to go. Broder Cat Key is the name. And you can check out the stats and the mm-hmm. measurables for our two, uh, 2027 grad. A little catcher, a little first base, a little third base. At a Bloomfield Hill, Michigan, and a PG grade nine, he's committed to Duke. Let's get into it. If he's going to Duke, he's going to have some fun with the with the hoops games too. Yeah. And uh, Broder joins us right now. Broder, great to have you on. Congrats on being the perfect game player of the week, powered by Launch Hydrate. How you doing? And did you have a week? Yeah, it was a great week. Thank you guys so much for having me on. Nice, nice. Of course. Run through it for us. So, like, what's what's been your favorite part about getting um, some successful at bats together lately and shining um, really in a national spotlight here? Yeah. So I say, you know, the thirteen U Select Fest. I've been two times this year. I went to the thirteen U one, the fourteen U one. Um, yeah, it means a ton. Those, you know, perfect game is really, you know, they've done a great job of putting guys on the spotlight in the thirteen U Select Fest. Um, it's awesome being able to compete with, you know, the top guys in the country and being able to stack myself up against those guys and seeing, you know, how far I've come along and just being able to see that I belong there. You ready to be a student at Duke? You right. You got, <laughs> you got so. some years yet. That's some, that's some big shoes to fill. You got to keep some grades up for the next four years in, in high school. Yeah. So my high school I'm going to, it's a pretty, you know, vigorous academic schedule and Duke helped me pick out all my classes for that and um, just determined what I need to do. You know, obviously pretty high GPA to get in there, but country day, the high school I'm going to is helping me uh, keep it all under control. Hey, my question to you is, it says catcher, first base, third base. What do you prefer right now? And do you see yourself, you know, maybe change of position? It says you can do a couple different ones. No, I'm, I'm a catcher. I play okay. first when I'm not catching, but yeah, I'm a catcher. You might of course need, you are. You might need to take he sounds like a right catcher. Afterwards. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, sa- he, he does sound like a catcher. He's got his were – you, were you late for this interview? No, early. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Early. Exactly. He was early. And exactly. That's, now, now, I got to ask you, though, be, being the fact that you want to be a catcher, is that why you cut your hair? Because your pick, you had, some, you had some big salad on that picture, and now you got, you know, you're a little, little trimmed up. School just started. Cool. School. Yeah, and it's hot. To trim and, it up. Yeah, in the Florida summers, it's all so hot. It's terrible. Yeah, <laughs> That's true. It is hot. Yeah, I know. Can't be. I live it. But but dude, um, I say that you sound like a catcher because you are very well spoken. You are in what grade? I just started my freshman year. I mean, come on. You are very well spoken. We'll say it for you. But if, if you can do interviews like this, you are already ahead of quite a few ball players that I've interviewed over the last few years in terms of just the way that you get a message across and actually have thoughtful words coming out. Is that fair? Yeah. Fair to say. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Of course. I, I got a question for you. So you just started your freshman year. You already committed to Duke. Do you find that crazy? Like you already ha- you already pretty much committed to a college already? Yeah, so my intention was never really to commit early. It was more so to build relationships with those coaches. Um, Mm. Me, my dad, and my mom sat down, and we kind of picked out four to five colleges that, you know, had interest in me and that I had interest in. And I went to camps all last, I want to say it's fall and spring, and just determined where I wanted to go. And Duke really was the best fit it felt like for me, you know, what coach Pollard's done with that program over the last few years, him installing that 
blue collar mentality into that program is really, you know, was a game changer. And I mean, he says it's a 40 year plan, not a four year plan. So, you know, after baseball is all done and hopefully I have a long career like you guys did, but after that's all done, being able to have that Duke degree and rely on that. That's a cool 40 year plan. Like I want the that's, portfolio. What am I <laughs> investing in? Todd's big on that. Like I want the whole deal. No doubt. That's no doubt. really cool. Hey, so tell us about your perfect game experience. Some guys that you've come across that really stood out and how much the experience obviously has helped you going up against top tier talent. Cause you're coming out of Michigan originally, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. So I'll touch back back on it, but the 13 you select fest, that was like, you know, that was a huge deal for me. I really, had that as a goal in mind after my 12U season. I thought I had a really good 12U and I thought I was good enough to go to it, but that was just motivation for me and being able to, you know, see all that gear for the first time when you step in that hotel room is awesome and being able to, you know, play with the top guys in the country and you almost kind of get treated like a big leaguer at fields, being able to take a bus to the fields and take BP three, four days before. All that's awesome, and obviously it's great, but I think the best part of the whole experience was being able to – so 13U, we had two kids from the East Tennessee Children's Hospital, Holston and Noah, come and visit us, and we you know, we just played wiffle ball and video games with them, and they were so you know, happy and satisfied with that. It was really just infectious seeing how you know, pleased they were with that. And then this year, we went to Galisano Children's Hospital of Southwest Florida, and that was – not to say a better experience, but we were met definitely more involved. We got to actually go to the hospital and there was a ton of kids. I'd say there was 30, 40 kids and just being able to see them laugh and run around and have a good time was really heartwarming. That's awesome. That's, that's awesome. You have the focus of what you, you need to focus on to be a catcher, focusing on other people, but yourself, what is PG, what are some PG measurables that you want to try to improve on or like like a number you want to get as a catcher like your pop time that pg puts out there and puts on your puts on your profile yeah so i'd definitely say you know obviously the rankings are awesome but they're just more so motivation for me being able to you know work towards moving up in the rankings and then as far as catching goes i'd say probably having i don't know one nine pop time would be cool and then this year, hopefully, 80 catcher velo would be really cool as well. Nice. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I wish I had 80 catcher velo. Ever. Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, there, is, is there a catcher you look up to right now in the big leagues or somebody in the past? Yeah, I'd say Yadier Molina. He was my role model just forever. He, The way he commands the pitching staff and his team, he's almost just like a manager while he's playing, which is awesome and what I try and do on the field as well. Who would be your second? <laughs> uh Mr. Kratz. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Dude, we dropped the Mr. We're gonna I was gonna say, I'll tell I'll tell my day. I'll tell my dad. That's uh, cool. I'll tell my you're... dad you're a big fan. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Hey, do you have questions for these guys? Anything that you want to ask them um that you think about when you're like, all right, big leaguers, how do you do this? Of course. So first one, Mr. Fraser, what do you think? Obviously being in the big leagues for a long time is you know, your, what was your approach if that, you know, if it changed or if you just stuck with one or if it changed with each pitcher, what was it? Yeah, well, it, that's a great question. It just depended, man. Eric can actually answer this too. I mean, for me, I was a fastball hitter. I was looking fastball away the whole time and I was reacting. And then, you know, in the beginning of my career, I was raw. I was a free swinger. And finally, I understood I'm not always going to get a fastball in these situations and then I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily sit off speed, but I'd slow my legs down, my mindset down. Eric knows I'd still be off balance and I'd find a way to get a hit. So for me, it was always the same approach. Look at fastball away until I get the two strikes. Then I get my two strike approach and try and dominate. And uh, me and Eric had some good battles back in the day. Awesome. Thank you. And then one more for Mr. Kratz. What do you think, you know, being a catcher is the best characteristic for a big league catcher? Well, you could read my book, Tao of the Back of <laughs> <laughs> The best characteristic is exactly what you've displayed in this interview. You talked about helping out other people. You talked about, you know, how much of a blessing it is to have the opportunity to be in the 13 select showcase. Like those are the things that like being appreciative of where you are will help you be the best catcher. Listen, 
physical tools, the higher up, and you've seen it in these showcases you go to, dudes are going to have the same tools as you. Some are going to even be better. Some guys are going to look down on you and be like, oh, you know, he's not as good. I'm better than him. All that stuff needs to be pushed aside because when you're catching, you have to worry about that dude that's out on the mound and the seven other guys that are out on the field, and you get to watch and you get to be the guy that controls controls them, pushes them in places, and really pitchers will say, well, the game doesn't start until you throw a pitch. Broder, tell them. Game's not starting until you give them a sign or you push a button, whichever it is, all right? So exactly. you be the leader on that team, and sometimes being the leader means you need to take one on the chin. And other times it means you need to hit that walk-off tank for the win. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. That was great. Really, Thank really you. good stuff. Hey, Broder, great to talk to you. Good luck. Keep crushing it. All right? Yeah, and Kratz? Yeah, and when I was a kid, I used to look at players and names and stuff. And then when I was an adult playing in the big leagues, I used to look at players and names. Like I said, physically, everybody's close. A separator is a big league name. You got a big league name. Yep. Broder Katke, yeah. Yep. We're rooting for you, kid. That's, yeah, we'll be watching. Thank you guys so much. It means a lot. Thank you, Broder. We'll talk to you soon, bud. Good luck. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. And uh, he is our perfect game player of the week. You can check out launchhydrate.com for 20% off on all four flavors, or you can scan that QR code that you see on the screen and make sure you use the claim code 20FOULLAUNCH. That was a pro interview Very can i nice. get can i get like what, what's some futures can i can i get futures <laughs> on well here's the thing i'll tell futures. you this tell that's one that. that i want to make sure we save in a folder so that when he's in the bigs we can show that and people will be like holy that when we cover was, the draft in four years he was a freshman in high school yeah, and he's he's mopping people off the floor in terms of his Solid. interviews How many, I've, I've interviewed plenty of adults that don't speak anywhere close to that with the combination of respect, not the cookie cutter bullshit. Oh my gosh, he's worlds ahead of Kratz already, and he could host the show instead of me. And that's, but that that really like people who are watching this that are PG people, kids that are playing PG, like that matters. Like mm -hmm. you're gonna get ranked on PG because of how hard you throw the ball, how hard you sure. hit it. If you answer the call from the college coach that first calls you, and you go, so <laughs> yeah. they're gonna be like. <laughs> see you later so, like what do you, you want can't, you can't teach that either you can teach it you can teach it parents yeah, parents who are no, watching but still like, talk to your kids because he was that he definitely person, I would, it's a I personality would, it is a personality some kids are quiet for sure yeah but, but there's also a way to if you're a parent and you want your son you're taking him to all these tournaments and stuff don't be afraid to like make sure your kid is a is awesome because that kid is clearly broder is clearly a good player mm -hmm. but I would say he's got great parents. Everyone probably parents, wants to really. play with him too, you know, at, on at PG. They're probably like, oh, I want to play on his team, you know? Yeah. You can tell. I would be, I would leader, be, uh, leader, yep. A leader. Also, yes, there are quiet, shy, all that. But totally. if we're relating this to football for a second, you're a quarterback <laughs> and you're like, oh, but I'm shy and I'm quiet. You can't do that. No. So for me, I mean, you can speak better to it, but most catchers have to be able to talk. In and communicate way. in some way. Yeah, you got to be able to. You you have to ex express leadership in some way. No. Yes. Okay. And you do not. Buster Posey was not a loud, boisterous right. person. Adley Rutschman, I don't see him as a loud, boisterous person. You know, he's not. He's not the Salvador Perez type of leader. Yep. Buster Posey led by example, but that was a Hall of Fame example. So there's there's different ways. So like coaches who are like. Hey, you're playing catcher. You got to be loud. And the kid's back there. Two outs. <laughs> runner on second. Plays at first. Like, it's just not going to happen. No. And that's okay. You don't have mm. to move him a position just because the kid doesn't yell loud. Just because he doesn't <laughs> change his voice to the yeah. travel team. <laughs> you need hey, a voice let's coach. go. Yeah. You know, no, let them be who they are. But that kid has leadership skills. And that is really important yeah. at that position. And you hear them by the way they play. The way they go out there and absolutely represent themselves on the field. Let's do a little baseball or viral hit of the week, Oof. starring our there. buddy Rob Thompson oh, and boy. the great Ronald Acuna Jr. So what's going Rosario on? Rosario makes me. Laugh. Let's 
And for more on this story, let's send it to our Philadelphia area specialist, Eric Kratz. Here's the quote. So, And also, if you're on the podcast side of things, we showed them doing the bird, the bird celebration that the Braves were doing in Philly and then celebrating clinching. And Rob Thompson said about the Braves home run sellies, quote, I like our guys to act like they've been there before. Eric Kratz, take it away. Here, reporting from Philadelphia, <laughs> there's a lot going on here. No, that's is it is a lot so, of nothing, though. <laughs> is it a lot of nothing? No. When you play each other 13 times in a row, when you have the MVP of the league, from the inner workings that I've heard and the disgruntled employees that I heard, <clears> it's <throat> not the players. It's very little Rob Thompson. His quotes were quoted because he's the manager. It is really a lot of the media and TV radio guys that are of the older ilk that are going, mm. oh, great. Like the other day, there was a home run. They really, they really get irked when Marcelo Zuna hits his home run. Marcelo Zuna's thing is he is, you know, he's already flashy and, you know, mm -hmm. With his, with his arm sleeve on, his yellow arm sleeve, so they're already, oh, get off my lawn kind of mentality. He hits his homer. He goes around first, gives like whatever the bullpen needs. You know, everybody has something that they need. And then it's <laughs> the stutter step around second. But the part that really irks them is he goes to Ron Washington at third. He does his stutter step at third, and then he's halfway down the line, and they stop. And they do this like patty cake, patty cake, give a baker's man, you know, all this stuff. And then they go home. And then he gets home and it's taps and noses and I helmets. Love it. and I love fucking it. love it. I and, love it all. And this is the game. This is the game. So this by Rob Thompson is really just, it was only three guys that were doing the bird celebration. It was Rosario, Ozuna, and Acuna. When Riley hit his home run, he did no bird celebration. He gave the bullpen this. Like the Phillies, every time they hit a home run, they salute the bullpen. The bullpen's amped. To What's me, that kind of stuff. What's the bird thing? Is that for I the no Eagles? Idea. I don't know. I don't, I, don't I, don't, know. I don't know if they saw the Eagles. The Eagles were in town. You know, fly, Eagles, fly is not anything with the bird. It's besides the birds being 2-0 and now, easy schedule so far. Maybe they're big, maybe they're big <laughs> Eagles fans. Who knows? But all that to say – I think it's just something that Rob Thompson said, and I wish, you know, when we have him on here, I'd like to ask, has he ever needed to tell his players, hey, calm it down a little bit? Because everybody gets a little amped up. Do some people take it too far? Maybe. Nobody's not run around the bases. So, like, who's taking it too far? Has Acuna taken it too far? Is that what they're saying? And Pretty who's... sure he can do what he wants. He's the MVP. Celebration-wise. He's the MVP. And he's one of the faces of the sport. I mean, that, that's my whole thing. Like, even bringing up how a dude celebrates. It's, and you get all the comments are great, you know. I would like your team to not throw meatballs, you know, make better pitches. This one actually stands out. LOL, bro. You know Bryce Harper plays in Philly, right? Like, I fucking love the emotion from Harper and the celebrating. And everyone does it differently. Like, I, I sometimes can't believe we're still talking about this. Now, if they feel like, you know, they're kind of mocking them, whatever, um, the Phillies, Wait, I'm not going to say don't do that. I'm like, cool, that's great. Bring on the freaking rivalry in the same division. Phillies knocked your asses out of the playoffs last year. Now you're the big boys this year, even though they've won the division six years in a row. But I love it. It's fun. Acuna's posting afterward. You know, I don't. I'm not going to go through that uh, old yeah, post. He's, post like, he's posting quotes. He's yeah, not but posting, that's fun. That's entertaining. He's not posting what he feels. I know he's it's fun. Quote. Well, that's that's messaging going out but there. But this like, is this don't is, like it. Try to get in our way. That's yeah. that's fun. You know who? You know what league does that? The NBA. WWE. They and do that every the two minutes. <laughs> the NBA does that well. The NFL does that pretty well. MLB keep doing this because it's entertaining. It's more fun. Even if Todd Father's on the other side and he's like whispers to his team like, "Fuck Acuna, man. We're gonna get him in the playoffs." Or this dude's showing off too much. Whatever. Cool. You don't like him? Let's get him. Let's get him back. You that's know. It. Let's beat him in the playoffs. That's good shit. No, I agree. I agree. I just <laughs> that's the way the game's going right now. And I'm you either you either like it or you don't. Get on my and lawn. Get on board with it. <laughs> and, but hey, everybody's doing some kind of thing. So that's it's just normal now. And you know, if that's their new thing, go roll with it. Roll with it. I, I understand it now.
I don't think Topper. I don't think Topper said he wasn't like I can't believe what Acuna did. Right. He said he focused it on his guys. People are taking it as a shot. Whatever. If you need haters, like if Acuna needs haters, like you saw him after the, while they're celebrating. To me, that's the time when you should be celebrating with your team. Mm-hmm. Don't bring on the haters. Like don't like to me that that is that's like an epidemic in in high school baseball is you're cheering against the other team more than you are for your team. Mm. And so to me, that's kind of the whole like that's just where we're at now and I love the celebrations. I think there's a difference in Acuña's celebration to Bryce Harper's celebration. And I think each player is going to connect with different fans. And I love that. You should have a A on your chest. If you're an Atlanta fan, you should have a P on your chest. And you pound that thing, and you love your team. And I, I'm i all about the celebrations. I also don't think Topper was. That's my thing. Yeah. I think the comment itself is maybe a little bit out of context. Totally. I, 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 you know, you're reading the quote. I'd, I'd want to see him. And also, I mean, I've been around him enough. I've interviewed him plenty of times. The, the vibe I get from him is I don't give a shit about that stuff. Like the players go have fun. Like I'm worried about the, the strategy knows. part of it. Yep. I, I ran spring trainings for years up at three in the morning. Like he, he's, he's not a drill sergeant. Let's put it that way. I, I don't feel, you know, Topper's not young, but I don't feel like he's old school. Is, is that accurate? He wants to win. He's, he's yeah, like, that's it. I was going to say, he just wants to win. He wants to win. That's, yeah. what his, that's why he, he put the care. work in. And so yeah. when guys want to win and put that much work in to get to where they are, they're, they're like, they're, they're probably not as talented as Ronald Acuna, who has extra time on his hands to come up with celebrations. Rob Thompson's like, I'm just going to go and like do what I know how to yeah. do. I'm studying. And he's not, but yeah, I'm studying. <laughs> <Lace up my laughs> old black I'm going to get my go. grades. Yeah. But that's not a bad thing either. Like mm. to eat your own. But don't go and don't go and you know step on anybody's lawn. You've been quiet. What do you mean? You 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 liking it or I don't mind it at all. No, no, I know. Though, That's right? what I'm saying. You're old. School. I'm more old school, but See, this is the way it's going. But, but I'm on. I'm jumping on board. It, I don't care. Your so, son so smashes me, a walk off yeah. homer in little league. No, You're like no, no, not in little league. No. So, not yet. No, not yet. Really? No. no. So does, when does so he when want to? Question. Does he want to? Oh, man, I'm sure he does. I, I just think it's a bad look at a, a nine-year-old doing that. So at what age? Pimping home runs, going around the base like this. I, I'll, I'll throw him off the team. I no, no chance. Oh, you're I, tough. I think when, when you when – you, I would say high school. High okay. School going, then you can start to yeah. flaunt it a little. When you, when, you get, when you get about 10 home runs in high – or, you know, oh, man, it's so hard. I don't know. I would say – I would say junior year in high school because then you got a name for yourself a little bit. Did Little League World Series Todd Frazier get after it? Because I don't remember. I love no. I mean, like when they were catching you on ESPN, did you do like a little like, let's go, baby? I, I held, with Tom's River. I held the bat up when I hit a home run. You one did? time. Yeah. I, I held it up and then dropped it. We got to find film, but I, I wasn't. <laughs> I'd never bat flip though. Well, and that was pre bat flip era. Your your kid does it. What do you say? That. Yeah, thank you. All right, you do all say right. that. I do. Just yeah. because it's not <clears throat> the game is so humbling, and when you step on at, people at, at, at that age, either when no. especially at that age, when you step on people on your way up the ladder, you got to come back down at some point, <laughs> it will, and it will find and you. And to me, you are the way you affect and the way you interact with people along the way is going to last way longer than you hitting a home run, standing at home plate, and doing like. The rocket launcher. And like <laughs> oh, I got, I got these flip. kids. Like, there's, there's, I'm not saying that makes you a better or worse player. It makes you a better or worse person. I had the nine-year-olds. They hit a double, get an RBI, and they're going like this with their hips and everything. I said, I should cut it out. Like, I'm at third base. Like, don't do that again. So I get in the dugout. I said, if I ever see that again, you guys are not, you know, you're not playing the next inning. Oh, like, baby. don't do that crap. But I like but the they, sell, they're but, watching yeah. big leaggers. They all do that. You, you give, get give your double. Like give me you like this. Give me like yeah, yeah. Oh, this. okay. No, don't be shaking. You your don't head want the or, dance. You well, want. What are you doing? Yeah, you're looking at. I get it. It's a part of life right well, now. Well, they're watching it. Big leaguers do sure, that. Everybody's sure. got their own. I totally, skit I totally team. get it. But don't be shaking your hips in second base. Come on. I think. <laughs> but I think. No, I think. I think. The, I think the the celebration is great because what it does is you're bringing your team together. Sure. Rosario and and Ozuna were in the dugout, like they were happy for his home run, and like there was just something together that they yeah. were all doing. They were all doing the 
third, whatever it was. So you get to second base, and you know it's like the second base celebration. Yeah, I'm good with as yeah. long as you're not like turning around. You hit a double over the center fielder's head, and you turn around to the center fielder, and you go, you know, yeah, like no, no wow. Well, at them, I got an example. It just happened last week. Okay, in we, Little League, we lost. No travel. We lost yeah. five four in the finals. Oh, we lost. So now he's mad. No, right? no. Listen, I'm the third base coach. <laughs> Big mad. Great game. Great game. No problems. I didn't have a problem with one parent this week. It was great. I'm the, I'm the other team. This, this week. I'm, I'm parent the of the team. week right here. The kid guy grounds out or whatever. They throw it over. The kid points to me. He goes, boom. He gave me the sword, bro. The kid looked at me and goes like this, boom, and went like that. I wow. said, wow. Oh. I said, wow. So, so now Is that turn, okay? it over, turn it over to the guy who's who everybody's on your lawn. Is that okay? <laughs> Because you invited everybody to your lawn, is yeah. that okay? Or are you like, you need to get off my lawn? Well, are we talking little? First of all, I'm going to say I have no experience on what the little league scene looks but like. Okay I haven't watched a, a little g- league game in 20 years. Boom! Yeah, yeah, but he the kid just pitched a complete game. He did great. What are you mocking me for? I don't no, know. no, I get so what you're confused. saying. He should be doing that to his dugout. If you're doing that to someone else, he you're trying to call them out. This is not. A- it's, it's wrong. It'd be like saying one plus one is five. You got the answer wrong. This is a sword. Yes. That's when somebody goes, oh, oh, it's a bad swing. Not a full swing and miss. Yeah, not a ground sword ball. Is. It doesn't make sense. You're doing it to Todd Father? <laughs> yeah. yeah. You played in the big leagues, no, dude. I, I Todd could have gone. <clears throat> and it's funny. His the dad kid, came up the, to me afterward and said, hey, my son, I'm sorry for what he did. I said, hey, listen. That, <laughs> that means a lot. I said yeah, it was disrespectful, wow. but at the same time, I'm glad you're going to say something to him. So this is we're actually, we actually play that team uh, tomorrow. Oh, are so, there still tickets? Is there parking? <laughs> I'm not. It, <laughs> Can I get player parking? I want to see this game. No, I'm going to have a nice convo with my son tonight. Say, hey, this is for daddy tonight. Let's no. Go. <laughs> yeah, we're getting this stuff back. This one for me. No, I'm not going to say And that. then Todd's just going to do like a slight. <laughs> Sword Four, back. Hey, no. four thirty, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Right. See, I, I would get, I would get your opinion on like, is on that Little okay League or on no. Big League? If, I'll, if I'll the comment Phillies for beat you. again, if the Phillies beat the, the Braves Phillies again, beat them. and they run out dog pie on the playoffs, and then they turn to their dugout and they go like this. If there's some inside story that we don't know about, yeah, I'm good with good it. Good or bad, I'm good with it, and here's why. Mm. It's happened. Hey, remember when the Diamondbacks <laughs> jumped in the Dodgers? Or sorry, the Dodgers jumped in the Diamondbacks pool. They yeah, had the brawl before bad. that. I mean, that's really going for it. That's like their property. That's like their house. I mean, my thing is, if you if you don't like each other, but you're not actually physically getting after it, Play better. and yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not going doing the finger or whatever, right? Oh, you're like, not. So there's a line. So yeah. you have a line. Everybody has. A Everyone line. has a line. Yep. Sure. Okay, that's fair. And yep. usually for me though, the line is like when you get like either like vastly um, inappropriate personal attack kind of stuff, right? Right, like if two teams hate each other and they're like, "Hey, listen, post game, like we really don't like each other. Like, I I hate that dude. I don't like anything about his swing and this and that, whatever. Like talking about his game, like okay, we don't get along, blah blah blah. But if he like talking about his personal life or something, I'm like, all right, that's enough. I don't like his girlfriend. Yeah, like what, that. I'm like, what? all right, you know, like oh yeah, I don't like his family. All right, that's too much. <laughs> you know. Anyway, it's good juice. Uh, check out baseballer on IG for the best trending baseball videos. That's a good one. Um, NBSBLR dot com is there for you as well with some merch okay i want to shout out our guy who was on with us yesterday um adam jones is being celebrated tonight for a little one day retirement action the orioles nice. tweeted today is your day simply aj10 and it is Ooh-wee. he gave us some insight yesterday so if you click back to yesterday's show and you look at the beginning there's a lot of info it's like he's coming out from center field he's doing the knuckleball he, he gave away some of the script so if if you're going to Baltimore right. and you want to tell your, you want to sound smart with your friend, like, go, hey, I think he's going to come out from center field. He's going to throw a knuckleball. You think uh, he's actually going to throw a knuckleball? I don't know. Over I can't plate? tell if he's kidding or not Oof. sometimes. Oh, over the plate? Yeah. I don't know. He's a pretty talented, dude. He is pretty talented. But knuckleballs are pretty hard to throw. <laughs> Brian Reed, just a tweet from a dude, a fan goes, and that uh, Adam retweeted said, two things you must do if attending the Orioles game tonight wear black for simply AJ10. And Adam liked that. And then two, standing ovation for Flaherty to show him we are behind him. Look at my boys here right next to me as I'm, what, as what I'm reading that? the tweet. Just <laughs> both of you. Who, in, both of you. Did you guys coordinate that? You guys both shook your head when I read that, that at the same time. Fan, yeah, a random fan. Like and Adam do, do was people, retweeting him. Like, 
whatever he says, people are going to do. That's essentially how it started, you know, in Philly on the no, radio. It was a radio I know. that started. Okay, oh, okay. and in, in Minnesota, who started that? For Correa, the six people that did it. Like, don't rip other a, people's style. Yeah, he doesn't you can't, need a you standing can't. ovation. To play Only better. one fan base now. Oh, Philly owns the non-boo for the do your own struggling yeah. ball. The player. Orioles weren't booing Flaherty. Well, what else can you do if if a player's struggling? What else can you? What else do are fans supposed to do besides boo or cheer? Are there other options? Because I'll no. give them out. Stand up and turn around when he pitches. <laughs> no. Don't Put your newspaper, newspaper up. Remember there. back in high school? <laughs> they would do the announcements, and they're like, starting forward. Yeah, and they, and they all uh, – or, or, or they would say, who? Yeah. After the, who? Like, Todd I, Frazier? Who? who? Yeah, exactly. That would be great. No, I – I mean, like that's that why scared. we're all black okay. today. Me too. For, for – I guess you're not. I guess you're not an AJ. Too, I didn't get the memo. He's not sorry. an AJ fan. I you don't follow Brian Reed. You don't follow Brian Reed on Twitter. Brian. Now. <laughs> sorry, Brian. Um, but, We're black but, to the game. Good luck with with Flaherty. We'll, we'll see, see if they're we'll See how the fans are with him. And this is a one day contract, so they got 27 men on their roster today. That's oh. true. Yeah, AJ and Jones is the funniest you get paid? one. No, are you, you kidding get paid me? Paid for one day. One. Oh, hold on, hold on, John Angelos. Are you paying Adam today? Okay. He said, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do last minute game time. Best ticketing app on the planet. You know where I'm going. Oh, Hell yeah. Go first. Then. It's sponsored by game time. I want to go first. Okay. All right, which game are you going to tonight? Okay. Where are you hitting the game time app? Because this one you actually need help with. And if you're new to the party and you want 20 bucks off, then you redeem that code FT Live. Okay. Because the game is sold out. It's the game we just talked about. The Rays and the Orioles. Card. What? <laughs> He's got a gold card. He can go to any of them. True. Although, if we're sold out, I'd be curious to get more info, but I'm we don't going. have time today. But no, well, Baltimore, no. Baltimore sold out. I want to go see Jonesy. I go to game time. I'm going to go to the app while Todd Father talks, and I'm going to find a seat. Put me down for Arizona, man. There's a battle going on down there. Chicago Cubs coming in. This is going to depend. I mean, one of these teams is going to get shocked here. So, we got Steele on the mound. He's He's been filthy all year. Stud. Poof. Cy Young right now? I mean, I think I think the last I think each time through, the guys are mixing in their Cy Young. I think Gallon might have kicked himself out right now. Gallon. The writers Snell. are loving Snell right now. They're Snell loving had, him. but he had another one. He had another good outing. You know, innings or no innings against Ken, he's in. I think Steele today his next two starts. Mm. He, I think he has three more this year. And if his team gets in the playoffs, I think well, he could push well, it over. Today's a big one. That's a good one, especially against Arizona. I just saw Chili Davis. He lives in Arizona. Me and him are going to fly out today. Just so you know, sold out Camden Yards. It's like a playoff game tonight. And Adam Jones' retirement ceremony. I got tickets in the 30s because I on here on the site. <laughs> sold on out. Game time. 30 bucks. Game time. Appreciate it. Let's go, baby. Okay. Take a picture. Just saying. So, I'm going with Todd. As we're running yeah, through it, you tell you. us where you're going. I'm going with Todd because that is the – You're going with him? That's the play because you got to you gotta go. There's a lot of other ones. You know, I want to see – You're going to the NL playoff game. I'm going to the AL playoff game. Yeah. You know I want to see – I mean, I know both those teams are making it for the Rays and the Orioles, but the division mm-hmm. matters a ton. Big, especially when you don't have starting pitching. Division. Mm-hmm. And neither of them really have starting pitching. Oh, well, especially Baltimore for uh, me. I'm like Braddish – Pump the brakes. Who's pitching the playoffs? I mean, it's going to be Bradish and, and Kramer. And Gibson. And Rodriguez. But then, yeah. But even Gibson, like, I don't know if they're going to start him in a playoff game. So, anyway, as, as we're as we're chit-chatting, this is how you run through the Game Time app if you're on YouTube right now. You get a great 3D image of your seat. I love that part. In Baltimore. It's still cool to me. Like, if you it's told me cool. that 10 it years ago, cool, I could yeah. pick my phone up and – Swing it around and be like, oh, these are my eyeballs right now? Cool, I'll take that seat. Redeem the code FT Live for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. So download the app, create an account, and use that code for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Uh, I want a good caller today to finish off. <sighs> need it. I need, need it. it. I need a good Healthy from Friday, Jersey, probably from call. Jersey. Let's go, Amp. Let's week. go, Amp. Good Amp. Oh, damn. Good Amp. Oh, Nobody's getting that... up on that. No, that's it. Oh, wait, wait. Like this, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Am I in the shot? You're in the shot. All right, let's slap hands. Ah. Yeah. People are probably like, 
why don't they slap hands in person? They're here. Nah, we don't want to do that. We're slapping hands right. with our fans. So we're on AMP. We got a caller. What's your name? What's your favorite team? And what's your question or comment? Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Owen Lapp. I'm from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, favorite team is the Philadelphia Phillies. Um, I will be sending this to my grandma because she and all of her siblings went to Souderton Mennonite, uh, same school as Kratz. So she's been a big fan of him for as long as he was in the majors. Um, so yeah, uh, my question is, I know teams, you just want to get into the postseason, obviously, but in the AL, it's kind of weird where you'd kind of rather get the six seed than the five seed because the six seed gets to play the twins who are 77 and 70 and the five seed has to play the Rays or the Orioles if the Rays catch them, but probably the Rays who have 91 wins. So if it comes down to like the last couple games of the season and teams have some control would a Seattle or Texas or Toronto rather try to maybe lose. So they get the six seed and have to play Minnesota. It's no. a great question, and that thanks for question. thanks for the call and the love for Kratzy. Mm. Beautifully done, Owen. So, before you answer that, should we no. change that rule? The answer is no. What you no, want to play? Wait, to what? You, the you don't, I don't care. You who don't lose playing. on purpose to get your no, seat. No, I no, know. No, 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 no. His question was Owen Lap. Okay, from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Okay. A fan of mine, his whole family, a fan of mine. Okay, <laughs> is beaming. So you from need ear to, to listen. Ear. I mean, this is big. You're so jelly. I'm not You're jelly. You're so jelly. But anyway, I want this fan to understand. Josh's going to put posters up around Tom. He Turner said the like, question my damn was: show. If if you're put in a situation, <laughs> do you? Lose the game, so you're a six seed to play. How do you wins. tell your guys? Go ahead. Well, we're actually going to lose, so you got to strike out. Forfeit. You got to you got to throw the ball over to catcher's head, so the guy could score from third. No, you play to win. You get in the playoffs because you're the better team. You got to believe and show your team that. Listen, it doesn't matter who we play, we're going to kick some ass. But I'm starting Eric Kratz oh, pitcher loud. tonight, and I'm so going to see what happens. Man. Imagine if the manager comes in the room and goes, yeah. "Listen, guys, we got one game left. Okay, um, so I have some news for us. All right, if we lose tonight." <laughs> We get to play the Twins instead of the Rays. I know you guys would never give away in at bat. I'm not asking you to do that. All I'm saying is, run into an wait, out on the bases. All I'm saying is, can I have the ball. Can I have the ball. All I'm saying is, you, you could three shot this because this is important, right? I'm the skipper of the Mariners. I'm Scott Service. So all I'm saying is, Eric Kratz, it's you instead of Kirby tonight, baby. Let's go. But think about it. Think about the fact. I'm that not going to think about it at all. Go ahead. Let's say, let's say George Kirby's out on the mound. He's like, all right, you know, we need to win this. They have a rain delay in their last game and because they're on the road because they wouldn't mm -hmm. have a rain delay at home. And all of a sudden they find out Team X lost. And they're like, hey, we lose this game. You're pulling them. We're in the sixth. You know, we're in the sixth spot. Instead, we win it. We're in the fifth spot. George Kirby can throw the first game of the series for us against the Twins because we get the L. Or you can throw George Kirby, and now he doesn't pitch until possibly game three, maybe, of a best-of-three series. Against the Rays or Orioles. No? You don't do it? No, your because job that sounds like because that sounds like how would you get away not, with that, man? Because oh, You'd be oh wait, the wait, talk you, of the town. Are you saying are you saying that they're not being competitive? Exactly. <gasps> oh, A's. Oh, <laughs> Royals. Oh, oh, all the tanking teams. All of a sudden, you're going to bring up competitiveness. Nobody's touching that. They're the sixth team now. All of a sudden, George Cur uh, Luis Castillo's starting the first game of the series. George Kirby's starting game two. Oh, we just set ourselves up for a little smoochy boochies. It's all about <laughs> winning titles. That's what everyone always says. Winning it. titles might mean mm. a different seed. It was a great question. We great might have question. to kick great that around question, a little bud. bit more. <laughs> <laughs> Godfather's <laughs> playing for dubs, no matter what. Join him. Follow at Foul Territory and ask us questions like that. Very well done. Liam Hendricks is hosting his event. Is it today or tomorrow? It's today. It's today. He texted Let's me go. during the show. The mate freaking texted me the too mate. late. I said, mate, send it to me early so I can send it over to Claudia. Let's put this on social, though. There. So it is an epic tailgate, and it is with DJ Pauly D. 
Seriously? Jersey's fine. Oh. You don't no. know about this? No, man. He wasn't on. It's to benefit <laughs> at Be The Match. Uh, it's an organization of healthcare professionals providing life-saving treatments to patients in need. Liam is a cancer survivor. And look at this. Look at this graphic. Yes, outside. <laughs> Let's save lives. Freaking awesome. Oh, Liam man. reached out because you weren't you weren't here for this. Liam reached out to Paul E. D. He answered immediately and said, Let's go. That's awesome. Good for him, man. Beautiful. You want to have a tailgate. I wish that's what? where I want to go. <laughs> who are the I gotta see who the White Sox are playing? I don't care I who they're playing. Attention. I'm gonna go pregame at the White Sox ballpark and then I'll go wherever. Beautiful. Game um, time's getting us in real cheap to that game, too, because it's Minnesota. <laughs> Minnesota. Hey, Minnesota's a real team, though. That's a playoff team. But it's We're going Chicago. to Cincinnati to see the Twins and the Reds starting on Monday. So the next time you will see us, we will be there. Yes, smiling just like that. <laughs> Danny Graves looks, like, surprised. As if, oh, you Danny know, Graves is a beauty. I can't wait for you two. He's Monday great. to Wednesday, 1 to 3. Eastern was, time, live from the ballpark. What was the stipulation? Besides mm-hmm. Scotty, he's the he's the host. Ex players with goofy smiles. <laughs> and then, then Scott, oh, Scotty made sure he picked this picture. I didn't even care. <sighs> I'm, all I'm, about the way I'm like looks. airbrushed in that one. Uh, <laughs> Kratz hats. What do you got in your head? <laughs> what do you got, Mister Kratzy? <laughs> oh my God, Mister Kratz. Oh, blind. That's what it is. I need hair. I got the. I don't pigs. Oh my. Another Iron Picks hat. I Jesus. told you I just found That's a, a good plethora. One. Super cool. Like super like we, we needed a mannequin in the in the locker room like they do for football games. See that I want to see if you have a head like mine. Oh. Oh my god. First first person. Todd, you can put your whole family in there. If you want to take your family to Cincinnati, we can just put them in Kratz's hat. We will see everyone in Iron Cincinnati. Picks. Kratzy. You're getting a few days off, okay? Have you a great weekend, you everybody. Wife, wifey, wifey dating. We're dating. I like it. Good luck on your dates. Fall's yeah. coming, boys and girls. Get those sweatshirts out. Let's go. We'll see everyone in Cincinnati on Monday on FT Live. Live. What guests? Uh, players from the Twins and Reds.